Hello, everyone, and welcome to season two, week 27 of the High Roll, the Super Moons, the weekly 10k that gets played over at GG Poker. I'm Kevin McCoy, also known as Rotterdam. And with me, as always, is the man who doesn't even want to spend two minutes with me before the show goes live. And that is Nana Noko. What's up, Nano? Doodles up, Ethereum down. How are you feeling? I think you're muted, mate. Muted, unmuted now. Feeling good. Uh, yeah, no, just kind of woke up recently. So, you know, the first, not, the first thing I want to do when I wake up is not talk to Roddy on uh, my spare time. So other than that, uh, we're good. I picked the winner last week. I'm going to pick another winner. Uh, I think I'm doing, uh, doing all right. I kind of let you have it last week, though. You know, I <laughs> wanted you to feel good a little bit. If we are reaching the halfway point of season two, I was like, you know what? I'll give Nano a few more points on the board. And then we'll start our epic comeback. You guys know the drill. This is our pre-pre-show. We have a pre-show, a pre-pre-show, and then we have the actual poker that starts in one hour. And actually, no, that's that's, not, that's a lie, guys. It starts in 40 minutes. So in 40 minutes, the cards go up in the virtual era. But let's go ahead and take a look at the nine players that have made it to tonight's final table. And then we can talk about some final table betting. Last week, a lot of you guys made some money because by far and away, the most amount of money went down on Michael Demo, and Michael Demo did ship it. Today, I think it's a lot more difficult. We've got, if you ask me, a pretty damn awesome final table lineup. Big names. Limitless is here. Isaac Haxton. Pablo Silva. He's trying to make the back-to-back -back top two finish dream happen. And we've got a pretty awesome chip leader, Mikita Basikowski. Why don't you start, Nano? Talk to us about your pick of the week and why do you like him? Well, Pablo Silva... I think he really did deliver last week. Uh, I think we've seen him in previous shows. We didn't really see him deliver just because, you know, he didn't come from a big stack. Uh, but last week, he fought. He fought hard. He actually almost shipped it. Uh, practically a coin flip, right? Like at the very end, uh, you know, they did have a spot where they could have got it all in, right? The flush drawing, you know, like, and he got the top pair. Uh, he had the chip lead. But like that, it was also the fastest final table we ever done last week, wasn't it? That one, that hour and a half, uh, roughly. Like that was pretty funny. Uh, but Pablo Silva was part of it. He fought really hard. I loved all the hands he played. He's resistant, and he's back. You know, we've had guys who got second place, came back and won it, and who are big household names like Mr. Gamble. Maybe Pablo Silva's is gonna do it. I don't know. I was just so impressed. That's why I told. It's my pick of the week. Yeah, he played well, and it seems like there are quite a few believers in Pablo Silva. 69 better so far, 6.2k, but the most amount of money has been placed on the guy who comes in as the chip leader. I had to record a little video as well, but I was kind of late, so I don't know if they posted it. But I went for Mikita Basikowski. We have seen him before at final tables, but most of the time, whenever he made it to our final table, he always came in 7th, 8th, or even ninth place. And then, of course, it becomes very difficult to win it, especially if... There is a big difference in the chip stack. Sometimes the smallest stack actually has a reasonable amount of chips. Then that dream is a bit more alive. But I feel Mikita has never really been in a position to actually win it all. Today is like, all right, Mikita, now you can truly show us what you're made of. I believe uh, our producer told me that he's kind of the same generation as Limitless and True Teller and those guys. That's when they all came up and uh, obviously playing the high stakes cash games. I mean, this guy has won a 25K over a GG poker. He's clearly capable of shipping big things. And I always feel good about the Belarusians, man. The Belarusians are crazy. <laughs> I think he's probably one of the most known, if not the most known, uh, Belarusian player out there. I've played a lot of uh, Makita in the past, a crusher. He's taken a lot of my monies. Uh, he's transitioned on to teams like everyone else. He's taken their monies. He's. Uh, I, actually, now that I think about it, I remember Ben CB was, I think he made a video some time ago. He's like, top 10 players, he thought, uh, in MTTs. And I think he put Makita at the number one at that time uh, of making that video. Uh, you're right, we have not seen him uh, perform that well because he hasn't been in a position to do so. He's coming near the middle or the bottom. Uh, he's actually been kind of unlucky in our past videos, if I recall correctly, too. This time, mm -hmm. dominating position. He knows how to ship it. And yes, you're right, also. He was at the same time as Isaac Haxton and Limitless, one of those old school guys that has crushed for to, for the test of time, has been playing. So, you know what? You, t you said he's your pick of the week. I do get first pick. You know, I'm going to leave him alone. We're gonna, it's going to be like last week, where, you know, like, 
you left Adamo alone. I'm going to leave him alone. You know, so we'll, maybe he's going to ship it. He is this type of player that I love a lot. Um, so I think he's a great pick. I just love Pablo Silva from last week. I don't know. What can I say? I mean, on that picture, he is wearing a mighty fine jacket. I uh, I might have to just slide into those DMs and be like, Pablo, I want to look fly too. <laughs> and maybe run as good as you do. Where did you get the jacket? Because where will be a lucky jacket. Talk to our viewers about the man who comes in second place. He is formerly known as Ducks, and he did win the High Roller Super Millions once, if I believe, if I recall correctly. I think he just came in once and just won it immediately. First time he made it to a final table. He has now a real name ID, Andreas Nosman. is what we're going to go with. I apologize if we mispronounce it. Talk to the people. What can we expect from Andreas? Well, honestly, I don't really know. I don't know this guy at all. Um, the Ducks. I don't really remember the Super Moons he won, but I do recognize the name. Uh, I don't know what to expect, Roddy. I know I'm supposed to, but I really don't. Is that a, fi a Finnish flag there we got? Yes. Or... No, no, no. Okay. Oh my god. Mate! <laughs> How many times do you need to see the European at a final table or literally in any other tournament to realize that that is the Finnish flag? Well, that's why I had a little hunch. Uh, you do love your Finnish players, though, right? So this guy seems up your alley. Like, you know, everyone from Finland is actually a really strong poker player. Um, but what have we seen? Uh, but no, I don't know what to expect from him. Uh, but he's got a big stack. Him and Pablo's got the same stack. Got about the same odds. You know, Makita is 3.6, so a significant difference here. Hmm. Yeah, no, I don't know. Also, K Maslek. I. We've seen him before, don't think he's delivered. Uh, also don't know that much about him either. I think the other two big names, uh, we can give them a little bit of love. Isaac Haxton first off. You usually love Isaac Haxton. Are you gonna really pass up on him when, when the opportunity comes around if I don't pick him? Yes, because I won the pool and then I'll and there's just pick the chip <laughs> leader, especially when you have a chip leader that is clearly capable of winning big tournaments and has shipped a lot of big tournaments online and offline in the past. So today, I mean, sure, I could go with Pablo Silva as well because I thought he was indeed a great player last week and he showed us some great things. I like the Finnish guy, so I could have gone with Ducks. K Maslek, we have actually seen him at the final table quite a few times now already as well, but I never get the shipping vibes from him. You know, he's clearly good and I'm sure that he's capable of winning it, but he's more like a, maybe a top three, top four kind of guy. Exton and Limitless, I don't think you can ever go wrong. But if you only have to pick one, then yeah. Mikita Batsikowski with 90 big blinds or Isaac Hexton and Limitless who come in towards the bottom, I think then the choice is easily made. But I think for the excitement, I truly hope that both Isaac Hexton and Limitless come off to a good start because then I think we're going to have a truly epic final thing. Yeah. Well, hey, we always talk about we get a hundred bucks, how do we spread it? Maybe we should. Throw that out there a little ahead of time so maybe someone can copy some of our uh, potential bets. Already. I'll let you go first. 100 bucks. How will you throw it down? Honestly, tonight, I think $80 Nikita, 10 bucks Isaac Hexton, 10 bucks Limitless. And I know that you don't make any money then if Hexton or, well, Limitless, you actually still make 100 bucks. With Isaac Hexton, you basically break even. But it's also, this is kind of the kind of better that I am. It's not very good. But then you at least feel good because I like those guys and I would like to see them win because it makes me happy. But obviously if they win and then you lose money, that's like, okay, I'm kind of happy, but I'm not totally happy. So I'll just put 80 bucks on Makita because I think he is going to win it. And if he does ship it, you walk away with, let me do quick math, $280, something among those lines. Uh, and if Hexen wins, you break even. If Limitless wins, you get a hundred bucks extra. And I feel that one of those three winning, that's pretty likely. You know, uh, yeah, I do think it's likely. Uh, you know, I, I'm more of a, I feel, I'm feeling limitless a lot today for some reason. Cause remember when, uh, what's his name? Giraffe Ganger, he was at the bottom, right? Bart Stevens. Mm -hmm. He got one double up, he ended up shipping it. Alanowski, limitless, is the same type of guy. Where he doubles up, he man, he's just gonna cruise. Uh, so I would put like, 50 bucks on Limitless here. Throw the other 50 bucks on Pablo Silva because that's my pick of the week and just call it a day, a gambling day. But I think it's a good bet at 20 to 1. Like, yeah, he's not going to win yeah. often, but 20 to 1, I think it's happening. No, I, I agree with you that I actually think 20 to 1 is a good price. I mean, final day of betting is about to close, guys. So if you want to make a bet, you have to do it real quick because uh, in one minute, the table actually starts for the players and that's when you guys can no longer bet. 
But I think if we play out this table 20 times, is Limitless gonna win one? Yeah, absolutely. I 100% I believe that. Is he gonna win two? Even that's possible. So then the 20 to one odds is already a good bet, right? Because that's all he needs to do. Win it two out of 20 times. I think at least one is pretty damn likely. So it's a reasonable bet because you know, you're getting even odds on that one. So I'm with you. I mean, final table betting is officially closed. So hopefully we were off some use today. <laughs> I Never. think today is just tricky, guys. Like, there's a lot of big names, there's a lot of top players, and we haven't even addressed everyone yet. Uh, but we'll do that in our actual pre-show, where we have now 30 minutes to talk about the players, take a look at their beautiful profiles, take a look at some of the hands they have played on their journey to this final table. But before we do that, I always want to ask Nananoko, how was the week? How are the doodles? And even if your doodles are doing good, Nano, doesn't it mean not a whole lot if ethereum is doing that uh yeah but at least it's 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 on its way up a little bit uh but no i don't i don't care about the price of ethereum right now because i'm looking at the long run as long as my doodles keep going up and up you know ethereum will make its run and it's just going to be up together uh regardless i'm a i'm a big doodles fan um in the world of poker you like to ask me what's going on mm -hmm. i don't know that much i do know there is a match that's never happening, the Roddy and Anatoly Filatov show. That's that's the main news. It's also continue has not happened yet. Uh, you got any update on that? If you would follow Anatoly on Instagram, I don't know. Do you? I don't I, know. Uh, you? I probably speaks in Russian, so definitely I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he posts a lot of things in Russian, but there's actually a translate button. Like I've used Instagram for 10 years and I actually never knew this, but whenever people just type a bunch of Russian, there's always a little translate button at the top left and then you can actually still see their tweets, but I didn't know that. But yesterday, Anatoly just randomly he didn't tell me or something. He posted some picture where he's posing on a building and he's like, I need a challenge. Are you guys ready to battle? And then he's like, add Rotterdam and he add, added one more guy too. So apparently Anatoly is done with the winter series. I think he has recovered from a little illness that he uh, was dealing with as well. And he seems to be eager to battle. And well, I am, I've been eager to battle for a little while. In the, in the beginning, it wasn't happening because of me, but lately it's more that he's been busy. But I'm also working on something else, so it would actually be very cool uh, to combine those things. I don't know if that's going to work out, but I'm going to tell you, Nanonoko, first week of February, okay? Wow, don't make that's... any plans. Keep the agenda open. I know you have the Tuesday night with me. Other than that, just do nothing in the first week of February, and then you'll finally be able to see if Anatoly can play some five-card PLO or not. So you want me to take a break from Chinese New Year to watch your damn heads up match with in five card in a game I'd understand with the champ. And totally, maybe I will. Maybe I will, you, Roddy. <laughs> it's still poker, you'll understand it. I mean, it's PLO, it's just we all get an extra card, we must use two. And other than that, all the rules are the same. So I think you'll have fun with it. And especially if we both stream it, I think you have a good time. Uh, anything else in the world of poker? for you uh no but i do i did want to talk a little bit about that dude on the bottom real quick have we ever seen 70 to 1 is this the highest ever i actually didn't even i feel like there was someone who was also 70 80 or even 90 to 1. But this has to be like the absolute bare amount bare minimum he must have made the final table with 0 0.1 big blinds or something you know something very 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 <laughs> small and then even when they roll back the blinds, he's like, well, I still don't have any big blinds because that is legitimately four or five big blinds. I guess we start with 60k, so maybe it's five big blinds. Yeah, five big blinds, 70 to one. It'll be 150 to one. I don't think I'd, I'd touch it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, and he's like a no-name player, but he does. he is from Brazil. Uh, so that, I'll give him that much, but 70 and to one is pretty insane. Eight hundred and nine dollars has been bet as well. Of yeah. Only seventy-three people, which means that the average bet is around ten bucks. I guess it could obviously be that one person bet a lot and everyone else bet one or two dollars. But yeah, there are apparently people who believe in this seventy-one dream. But I don't know if they know the blind level. That's what that's what I'm wondering about. <laughs> All right, let's just go ahead and hop into our actual pre-show and let's take a look at the beautiful profile of Nikita Batsikowski. The man who I think is going to win it all today. And a lot of you guys seem to be joining me in that prediction. Has played 11 times so far in Season 2. Has won only 60,000. So he was kind of due for a big finish. But I think he will make up for lost ground tonight. 
in season one he made two final tables he did cash 11 times but he has never done better than fifth place and Anoko, is it inevitable that nikita basikowski will do better than top five tonight yeah i, I would hope so um you know just fifth <laughs> place best is it's not too good uh he has two previous final tables you know usually we see we've seen guys i, I don't know every single guy i tell you is like really good has eventually delivered and usually have shipped a super millions by now. I think Makita is one of the few guys who has it. So, you know, I think this, you know, I might change my mind. Maybe I'm going to snipe this guy at the last no, second. Who knows? Right? <laughs> but no, he's a, he's a great player here. Um, he's a cash game player who's transitioned to MTTs, but still plays cash game. Very solid. Knows how to play short stack really well, actually. Knows how to play big stack really well. Uh, really well versed. And um, I guess his biggest downfall is he's a slow player. Uh, he's a really, really slow player. A lot of people give him crap for that in live poker. Uh, but, you know, a lot of the Russian players are just very calculated. Don't want to give anything away. So it, it is understandable. Everyone's got the different views. And just, you know, he's slow. A little slow. So he's the opposite of a Romashka, that's what you tell me. Absolute opposite here. Uh, we'll see how he plays here today, but usually uh, he does take some time. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Mikita had, where he took a lot of chippies of Bill. This is perhaps why Mikita is a chip leader and Bill is a short stack, because this was very deep into the tournament, probably final two or final three tables. King Jack versus Ace Queen for Bill flops the world. Mikita also flops pretty amazing, right? With bottom pair. But I got shot and the backdoor king high flush draw. So it's a great flop and he gets paid off on the river. Do you think that Bill could have gotten away from this this deep into the tournament? Such a big bet on the river or is this one of these psych hall moments? Yeah, this is really, really deep. Possibly the uh, final table bubble at this point, I'm going to guess. Uh, but uh, he, yeah, he could get away, of course. Um, you actually look here, Makita went for a slight overbet on the river, uh, on a four straight. So I think Bill kind of leveled himself a little bit. He was like, oh man, like, why is he going so big? He's got a big, you know, he's got a big stack. Like, is he trying to bully me a little bit just because, like, I checked the turn where it doesn't look like I have a king, which is true. A lot of kings would bet the turn because there's two clubs up there, there's two pairs. Um, leveled himself, and that's just a great bet sizing from uh, Makita. Just knowing his opponent how his opponent was going to read the hand a lot of guys will go smaller they probably will get called too but uh yeah no it's just an annoying spot and it's just a lot of just soul reading and he read incorrectly in this one unfortunate one for bill and that's why i guess he is our shortest stack uh perhaps this is something we can keep an eye on if bill does ever collect some chippy tonight maybe we'll see him on a uh, warcraft against Makita Belskowski and he's like, I believe you still have something that's mine. And that's 980,000 chips and I want to get them bad and back real quick. Let's go ahead and move on then and take a look at the man who comes in second place tonight. And that is Andreas Nasman, previously known as a Ducks. He's played in season two only six times. Has already won 335,000 because that's the time he won it. That's not even that long ago and it was a part of season two. How did he do in season one? Uh, one cash. So, seems to not be playing this all the time. If we take a look at some of his other finishes, it feels that he doesn't play 10Ks too often. But when he does, he ends up winning them. And he did sell out 69%, by the way, at 1.02 markup. So, a lot of people believed in him. And he has made it to another final table. It's actually uh, yeah, 69 percent. What a funny percentage to sell out! But, but uh, that's a lot of percentage he is selling. So he, you know, he's going to be a bit more comfortable hitting this pound table, even though he did win it before. Uh, but uh, 1.02 selling out is a good sign because there's guys out there who put a markup out there and try to sell a lot of percentage, and either they sell like 20 or 30 percent, or they sell like less than one percent. So people do understand that this guy is good, wants to sell some action and reduce variance. So um, it's a good sign that he knows what he's doing. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands he had then, where he was battling it out with a player from Turkey. One underscore two underscore three. Uh, ten seven against Jack Ten. What do you see, Nanoka? Yep, check raises to flop straight. Um, 
seems standard. Bets the turn. He bets the turn actually slightly less than half the pot. Uh, his opponent takes the bait, was thinking, look, if you had a big hand, wouldn't you want to protect yourself or something? Uh, calls it off and uh, beats the Jag 10. Really well played. Uh, with the shallow stacks, you can't be folding this to do a turn shove, even though, yes, your opponent could have a flush. Uh, but if he doesn't have a flush, you're crushing in this spot with Zach scenario. And it kind of speaks for itself. Does not quite flop the nuts, but the second nuts is still pretty good and yeah, gets max value. Well done by Andreas and obviously all the best. Let's see if he can go two for two, two final tables, two victories. That'd be pretty sick. I feel like we have seen... No, I don't think we've ever seen... Well, I guess Michael Adamo, right? In the very beginning of season one, he won his first two final tables immediately. Let's go ahead and move on to Nenonoko's pick of the week, Pablo Silva. Back-to-back -back final tables for him. I uh, had a great run last week, second place for almost $400,000. Has won $496,000 so far in Season 2. Uh, Pablo's is great, right? Pablo play played great last week. He could have won it if Michael Demo wouldn't have made his flush on the river. It could have all been different, but overall it was still a great uh, day at the office for him. And it's pretty awesome to see him back immediately. Yeah, immediately and with a big stack, right? It's not like he came back and he's got a short stack, but I think he is in position to potentially ship this tournament. Um, he's not the chip leader, but uh, he wasn't the chip leader last time either. Actually, he didn't even come in near the top. I think he came in the no. middle or something. Yeah, yeah, center. Like, like fifth the or middle. sixth or something. Yeah, so uh, I, thought he, I thought he was impressive. I don't know if you thought he was impressive last week, but... Uh, I don't know. Seems like a hot run, right? Like, cause when you, whenever you win, uh, almost win, and you come back again, you're on a hot run. It's just mm -hmm. never-ending heater. I do think he was impressive, but if I recall correctly, he also got a bit lucky, right? Didn't he win like an ace eight against an ace jack? And on top of that, if I think back of last week, I just think back of the Michael Adamo show. Michael Adamo killing aces very early on, taking out the second biggest stack at the table, and just kind of dominating it from there on out. And I think Michael Adamo did most of the hard work. And everyone else just tried to hang on for dear life and see if they could make a couple pay jumps and they did but i'm sure we'll see some great things from pablo tonight let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands he had where he took a lot of chips from michael watson with his pocket sixes flop a set versus ace king king seven six pretty brutal one for michael watson yeah actually watson goes i think it's a little bit thin on the river right like some I guess you're trying to get called by like a king 10 exactly, you know, backdoor hearts, better two pairs, stuff like this, goes for the value, obviously. Yes, the sixes is a little scary to call the river shove just because the backdoor hearts get there, there is ace 10, 10, 9, but like, if your opponent is jamming ace king, well this is the snappiest call you've ever seen in your mm -hmm. life, right? Because that means he's jamming two pair, he's jamming one pair. he's jamming bluff, so I like the way he played it. I like that he kept playing it slow on a turn. Uh, just because it makes once he raise if he went all in on the turn It does look really strong and your opponent might be able to find some hero folds here and there for like maybe like a king 10 So mm -hmm. by just calling you let the, your opponent uh, Take the bait Yeah, and I mean for Pablo Silva I do think it's an easy con the river because he only had a hundred and one thousand ships left So at that point you're playing what eight big blinds basically 8.5 big blinds I mean it takes a very big hero to fold the set on the river for an 8.5 big blind bet. <laughs> so I think for Pablo, this hand kind of played itself, but well done indeed, played it slow and got the full double that he was looking for. Moving on, we're gonna take a look at the profile of K Maslak. Some of you guys may remember the name and definitely remember the avatar because he's got the red cap avatar. I know that blue caps are a thing. Uh, that's like the whole no cap thing. But I don't know what the red cap is all about of K Mess. Like, I don't think he's trying to make anything great again. But he is a WSOP winner. He has played 21 times, by the way, in Season 2. So this is not a guy who just randomly makes a final table every now and then. He is committed to the high roller super millions. Maybe he's into the doodles, and that's why he's so committed now. <laughs> oh, yeah, we need to get you that Pudgy Penguin still, don't we? Forgot about that. Um, he won a WSOP bracelet. Uh, he's done well in GG. Uh... I guess is his best finish in Super Moon is really a ninth place finish. Wow, seems really low. Uh, so, but he's had multiple final tables, so it's kind of weird that we're posting that one there. But uh, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Okay, cool. Maybe it was one of the bigger ones, I suppose, because ninth place for 80k. Um, I actually feel like I've seen this guy before when I used to play live tournaments. So 
Cool. Oh, there, he, so he won a bracelet live, apparently. So you can see this. He's holding up his bracelet. It wasn't one of those online bracelets, so <laughs> it was extra special. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands he had, where he battled it out with the other player that made back-to-back -back final tables in the last three weeks. Obviously, he's not here tonight in the Space 411. Poor Space, man. You got top two pair on the turn. You think life's pretty good. Your opponent is betting into you. You call, and then you see drawing death. That has to be the worst feeling ever, where you're like, I gotta be good here, right? Like, no, you're actually drawing that. Like, that's just brutal. Yeah, it's uh, it's absolutely pretty insane to be drawing dead with two pair, top two pair, like, ever. Like, it's actually almost impossible to be drawing dead, right? Like, if you, if you got pocket fours, you know, you still can hit the jack or ten or something. Like, I can't believe he's actually drawing dead. And it was such a good hand. He makes a full house on the river somehow. Oh my god. Just, You're not going to be that fun. guy, right? Yeah, well, I was about <laughs> to say, this is where there is someone out there that's like, and he even made a full house on the river. Like, there is not a poker player on this planet that cares about the river if they get it in drawing that. Like, that's just the most irrelevant thing ever. Yeah, no, it's, uh, he's drawing dead. What can I say? Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, but yes, you're right. He did make a full house on the river. Well done, then. And that's a great analysis there, mate. All right, moving on. Let's talk about one of the all-time greats. I mean, you can talk about that story of that one tournament in the Bahamas where the wind is going through the room and his hair is all over the place. Isaac Haxton, he's back. Obviously, he was at the Joe Rogan experience as well, once upon a time. That is an episode that I really enjoyed. I think he's the only poker player that's ever been on the Joe Rogan experience, unless you, yeah, you know, Dan Dozerian, I guess, to some degree, but I think we'll, we see Isaac Hexton as a slightly different kind of poker player than Dan Dozerian. Has played 25 times so far in season two, has made almost a million bucks already. Did win it once, but only in season one, July 7th, 2020. That was season one, right? It must have been. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the first win was season one for sure. Yeah. Well, he only has one win. Oh, yeah. Go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, Isaac Axton, obviously, uh, one of the GOATs, one of the all-time greats, a legend. If we had a Mount Rushmore of poker players, I think most people would put Isaac Axton's face on there. I think he deserves that. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah, he's got some big scores, huh? 3.6 million, 2.5, 1.3. Uh, always seems to do really well in the Super Millions, too. Like, always gets top three, maybe a fourth place finish. Uh, you know, even when he comes at the bottom, he ends up shipping the tournament. He's just, like, one of the most solid guys. And he absolutely hates Ace-10. Like, he hates Ace-10. I don't even know him that. Like, he just folds it every single time. Ace-10 is just the garbage hand for him. And he always is correct when he folds it, too. Uh, high stakes pro, cash game player, turn into tournament player, plays everything, still plays cash games, I'm sure. Uh, I think he's gonna do good. I think he's one of the guys that we're most excited for. Him, uh, Makita, and, and Limitless. I think, you know, you can go, you can't go wrong with picking any of those guys. Of course, I threw in some Pablo Silva love, but uh, yeah, I love Isaac Haxon, you love him, everyone loves him. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Haxton had, where right? he was battling it out with Simon, uh, Simon Madsen, that is. There is a couple of Simons out there. And it's a pretty sick one, because Simon actually has a monster draw on the turn, right? He's got the gut shot, he's got the king high flush draw. It is an ambitious call, but I don't hate it. This is relatively early in the tournament. And this is kind of one of these spots where you call and you hope that you just bink the river and then you can start building a proper stack. And he did get the spade. I know you're going to go there, but he got the wrong one. What do you see in this hand? Well, it's exact some check raise. Uh, he just check raised so tiny. But it's actually the perfect sizing to get like the maximum amount of value from his opponent, right? Because had he made it a little bit bigger, I don't think that King 8 is going to call the flop check raise because, you know, it's still just kind of a gut shot with like a lot of back doors. But, you know, stacks gets shallow when you start raising bigger. So it gets the check raise, gets called. Jams it, gets called by a flush draw here. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think the King A of Spades call is bad because, in theory, you know, he can actually be ahead on the turn just from like another, like an 8 9 of diamonds, you know, like a Queen 8 of diamonds, like these types of hands might check raise and then jam turn. So I think the King A suited here is a mandatory call. If you're behind, you got a lot of outs, 
Uh, just happens to be up against a set, so your king's uh, no good no more. Uh, but now yeah, Haxton, like when he Haxton gets a set, he gets maximum value. Other guys get a set, you know, they win the minimum. <laughs> Can't wait to see some Isaac Haxton poker tonight. Obviously, all the best to Hollywood Haxton. Let's go ahead and move on and take a look at the profile of a man that we haven't mentioned once yet tonight because we've never seen him before. VSM PZD. I have no idea how we're going to pronounce this tonight or how we're going to go with it, but let's take a look at the profile. Apparently had a monster score in a 5k bracelet event. Well, 1.4 million. That's honestly very sick for a 5k event. That must have been a main event. Yeah. tournament. Yeah. That's a very, very big... I guess it's the main event online right then, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's pretty sick all right uh one very big score clearly plenty of other decent scores too because he did win 2.6 million in total so far over at gg poker but if we take a look at his other finishes we're almost putting him in the 25k group category even though he's got a 32k finish and a 17k it is a different kind of profile tried to sell 80 percent only sold 17.7 .7. But it did go for a 1.05 markup, so that's obviously pretty high for a 10k. Cool. Do you know anything about him, Nano? No, I'm gonna think uh, this game is a little bit out of his league a bit. Um, yes, he did get a 1.4 million score in the main event. I think he cashed out probably a lot of it, because if you look at the other scores, he's playing $200, $200 tournaments, $100 tournaments. He tried to sell 80 prisoners of his action despite winning 1.4 million in a tournament. Uh, and he actually he did sell the markup. He did sell some percentage, but he still had to put up a decent amount of his own money into this tournament. I don't know what to expect. He could play quite tight. He could play crazy. Um, but based on, you would think if someone won 1.4 million, he's still trying to sell a lot of action that maybe he won't play too crazy here today. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands he had to see if he can learn a little more of him. Well, he took a lot of chippies from Daniel Devores, King Eight of Hearts versus Ace King of Diamonds. Uh, what what happened on the river exactly? Is Daniel <laughs> trying to be a hero, or <laughs> well, you can't be bluffing when you're calling, right? Dan uh, well, but Daniel calling with Ace King eyes, wow, super ambitious for a VSP MP. Like obviously, like his hand is standard, right? You bet the turn for draw, you get there, you jam because you don't have much stack. I don't know what the Ace King is a very ambitious call here. I guess in theory he unblocks uh, a lot of hands he's trying to pick off, I guess, like the 8-9, 10-9, 6-8. He doesn't have any blockers to those, but I would have preferred to at least have a heart in my hand. Like so you block some of these flushes, like the King Eight of Hearts, for example. But uh Daniel makes big calls. Or maybe he's one of those guys at live poker who always has Ace King, you know? Like everyone seems to have Ace King in, in live poker. He's just like, I've got Ace King. I won't fall to any bet. I don't know. It's kind of ambitious. <laughs> yeah. Big blind was 70k at this point. So we're looking at a bet of a little over seven big blinds, I guess. Yeah. It is ambitious, especially because Daniel DeVoros was not exactly swimming in it, right? It's not like he's got six million chips. So those seven big blinds mean a lot to his stack. Oh, well. Worked out for VSM. Unfortunate one for Daniel DeVoros. And he is not joining us this week at the final table. And this hand kind of explains why, I guess. Let's go ahead and move on. We have a few more profiles to cover in seven minutes. Our final table will actually start. We can take a look at the beautiful, impressive profile of Viktor Malinowski, also known as Limitless, a GG team member. Won two satellites, but he's still in for six bullets. <laughs> I love Limitless. He's the best. 19 Super Million appearances so far in Season 2. Has won 350k. His third final table, fourth cash. Did all right in season one because he did win it once and he finished 27th overall. We had over 1200 unique runners, so obviously decent. I'm just always happy when Limit loses at our final table. Yeah, ring game, cash game, master plays crazy heads up matches. Uh, Malinowski is it's just all around great. Him and Adamo, they just crushed last year. Uh, you know, they, they shipped some super millions. They had they ship each shipped a super high roller bowl, right? This guy won 3.7 million last year in the tournament. Adamo's won his own. He's he's a, they're both rebuy kings, you know, they'll put maximum amount of rebuys in. Uh, they are absolutely fun to watch. Won't skip a beat, won't skip a spot. 
Uh, yeah. And yeah, no, I just love Limitless. He's great. And it's funny, yeah, because we're like, he won two satellites, but he's in for six <laughs> bullets. It's just yeah. a, it's such a funny statistic. Uh, I would love to see him do good. I do think if you did put money on him at the bottom, if he gets one little double, he will run it up. And he's just a smart guy. And apparently, you like to always mention this, but he said King X suited is a good reshoving hand on chip leaders, right? When you're a short mm -hmm. stack. So yeah. I'm sure he'll flex that knowledge. Or although I said he's debating us so hard. No, it's King Six suited, and it's funny because the hand we're going to take a look at, I don't know if he did it on purpose. This is actually him playing King Six. But yeah, uh, you know, there are some players where I wouldn't even want to be like, oh, he's in for six bullets, you know, but I think we all know that Limitless can afford it. You know, he has lost cash uh, games to spots, I think a lot bigger than 60K over and over and over again. Uh, he's no stranger to that. So a couple bullets here and there for Limitless. That's not going to hurt the bankroll all that much. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that he had on his journey to this final table, where he did have the suited King Six, ended up making a straight what do you see, Nanako? It's a pretty small pot here. He gets a little tricky on the turn and checks that back, which I do like that uh, because he shouldn't have a six in his range from under the gun very often. So by checking when he actually makes the straight, I think it gives the big blind who's supposed to hit uh, the straight more often some rope to maybe try and take it away from him. On the river, it does get checked him again. So he's like, okay, seems like my opponent just has a random pair that's small. I think it's the perfect bet size. If you go too big here, it just looks really random. So go small. Got paid off by just a pair of fives. Cool stuff. Well done, Limitless. Hopefully off to a good start tonight, because then we are in for a three. Two more profiles to cover. Let's go ahead and take a look at the man that we have also not mentioned yet. But I believe that his name means joyful. But I also think that it's something that like, could be like Merry, because if you wish someone Merry Christmas in French, it starts off with that word, but my French is le terrible. So I think we're going to go with joyful. And that just makes our lives a lot easier. He won a Sunday deep stack while playing this for 86k. So clearly had a great weekend. Has played five times so far in season two. Is a third cash. That's honestly pretty good. If you only play five times, cashing three times in a 10k. Has played some 25ks. I guess you have no idea about this player though, right? I have no nothing about him. We don't know if he paid 25 to play that tournament or if he just satellite it in. Uh, he didn't satellite into this tournament, so he's got some money to play, right? Uh, but he won the Sunday deep stack while playing this for 86k. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So he, can, he he plays tournaments as satellites rather than actually playing the satellites. Uh, so, yeah, no, I don't know much about him. Joyful here, uh, we're I mean, assuming. Could be wrong. I love that you talk about a satellite for the 25k. Like, I don't know what kind of satellite it was, but let's be real. Any satellite to a 25k is still going to be pricey. There aren't too many that start off with like a $15 chance to then level your way all the way up to a 25k buy-in and somehow make it to top eight and walk away with 96k. So I'm sure that Joyful knows what he's doing. Doesn't have too many caches yet. We can take a look at his hand real quick, but his hand is uh, honestly one that doesn't need a whole lot of talking. Shall I do it, Nanonoko? Can I do it? Yep. Can I do Just the analysis one time? Go for it, dude. All right, guys. Pablo Silva opens things up from the hijack with aces. Joyful on the call-up is like, I love it. I've got queens. I'm going to bump it up a little bit. Pablo Silva is like, get out of here, nerd. I don't even have that much. I play 10 big blinds. I've got aces. I go all in. Joyful calls. Joyful spikes a queen immediately. And that's all she wrote. Right hand. Yeah, cool. Well done. Uh, I guess this is just one of Pablo Silva's rebuys, so that's a, that's a big takeaway too, right? Yeah. And last but not least, we're going to take a look at the profile of the shortest stack coming into tonight's final table, Season 2, Week 27. This is Bill, 2021. That's an awfully specific name. He's like, I could have gone with Bill 2020, but no, 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 no. Bill 2021, that's where I will peak. And now he's going to send a message to G, can I please change my name? But Bill seems to be kind of a high roller, because Bill plays a lot of 25Ks. Most of his scores come out of 25Ks. So I don't know exactly which Bill this is, but I'm getting Bill Perkins vibes, but I know that that's not happening. Uh, but yeah, pretty sick. I love 25K. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not Bill Perkins. I, I know I've seen him play uh, at some sick cash games on GG. It's not Bill 2021, I'll tell you. Uh, but Bill <laughs> 2021 is loaded. 
okay? Like, it's really hard to satellite into this many 25Ks, and some of the 25s kind of, it's like, kind of like the side uh, tournament ones, so, like, he's rolling in it. Uh, he can afford to play this tournament. Probably doesn't even know. He probably just learned about the Super Millions, like, couple, not too long ago, right? Because he only has three appearances. Didn't even play Season 1, but plays big. Just felt like playing it. All of a sudden, he's like, oh, okay. It's just 10k, but 20, no 25k is running. And now he's at the final table with five big blinds, apparently, but 70 to 1. Probably put 25k on himself on uh, final table betting right. to make uh, things juicy. Who knows? we got to speed it up a little bit because the clock has go, go, go. 30 minutes past 7. Let's take a look at his hand real quick. He played some Jack 8 of Clubs versus Limitless. There was a lot of checking at first. Bill bet a little bit on the turn with absolutely nothing, right? I guess a gut shot. A 10 would have given him a stray, but that's about it. Uh, limitless called, but then he found an 8 on the river. Block bet, bluff, we don't know what it is. What we do know is that the seed selection process is happening. So then yep. you can tell me, but let's just go ahead and take a look at our beautiful final table so we can start what we are all here for. Let's see how far along they are. Okay, yeah, we are. Yes, he's, yeah. Yeah. All he's right. like in the middle. So what was that bet on the river with the 8? Was that like a... Value bet? bet? I don't know. It was a uh, value bet, I suppose. But uh, yeah. Hey, look, Pablo Silva straight with the helmet on right away. That's pretty funny. Um, so who gets first pick? You. I get first pick. So you're telling me I can take that guy, Makita. Okay. Right. No, but I'm not going to take him. I'm trying to think. All right. So we mentioned Makita. We mentioned Isaac. We mentioned uh, Malinowski. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip Makita for you because you gave me the favor last week. I don't. I want to pick Malinowski, but he's just so short. I'm gonna have to skip him. So it's kind of like Isaac Hacks and a Pablo. But why the hell is Pablo wearing a helmet? That kind of it's kind of weird because he didn't put a helmet on last week. All right, but let yeah. me see seat selection. You're gonna take Makita no matter what, right? Uh, yes. Okay, he's taking position on Pablo. I don't like that, so I'm going to go Isaac Haxton right across from him. I think Makita is going to handcuff Pablo in this spot. Uh, so that's my pick. You want to lock in Makita? Yeah, yeah, of course. Man, that's actually murderous role, though, at the top. You've got Limitless, yeah. Pablo, Silva, and Mikita. Imagine if Limitless gets off to a good start and gets a quick double. I love Isaac Hacks in his seat, but I guess I would have loved it more if he would have been on the left of Andreas. But I think Isaac Haxton has an amazing seat, man. On the right, if it ever gets filled it all the way up to folded, all the way up to Bill, you've got Maslek, the Joyful, and then Isaac Haxton. I think Isaac Haxton somehow won the seat selection process. <laughs> and I don't know how he did it, but he won. Yeah, no, I think his seat is is really good. Um, that's why like seat selection is really important. Uh yeah, no, it's amazing. Like him and Makita have like the best seats uh, by far at this final table. I'm, I, hey, it's just Bill. like really, wow, is he in? Oh, he is yeah. in first hand. Unfo unfortunately, for Bill, who obviously came into this final table with a little over four big blinds, less than five, uh, or basically five big blinds. Yeah, he sees all this extra money. He's like, you know what? Maybe VSM is making a move on Andreas. It just sucks for him that Andreas did, does have the same hand. So hitting a king or a jack is going to be a bit more difficult. But there is extra money in the pot. He's got a suited King Jack on his big blind. I don't hate it, actually. It's the first hand. He waited a day and a half to play one hand. But I do think it's the correct call. I would have gone with it, too, I think, with five big blinds. Yeah, uh, I think that's fine. I'm just a little bit curious what's happening now. Andreas is actually thinking about making a play of King Jack suited. But to me, this three bet is already kind of strong, right? Like, the guy's open. Three betting you from kind of a shallow stack. I'd be a little bit worried. Like he shouldn't be making too many plays when Bill was so short. But he's really thinking hard with this King Jack suited, isn't he? Yeah. No, I mean, imagine if he gets called, then PSM might just call too because he plays twenty five k's all the time anyway. And he's like, how did I end up at a final table over ten k? Let's just go with it. But Andras does make the fault. Let's see if King Jack can get lucky. No luck so far. We need a king or a jack. And we need a king or a jack. That's not a club. That's really painful because the spades are gone. So he's got two outs. He's got two outs, and that's not one of them because it's the wrong suit. Uh, unfortunate. Bill is eliminated in the very first hand. Hopefully, we'll see more of him in the future. That does always suck. You wait a day and a half first hand, but I still think it was the correct play. Yeah. Um. So eight hundred dollars of final table bet betting burnt 
in two seconds, 70 to one gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think too many people really expected a big payout on that one, but sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I did thought of something. Look a at this. Bit. Yeah. Uh, just... No, before you talk about that, Mikita Batsikowski just all in king six of spades from the bottom, even though Maslak has 2.7 million chips. We were wondering if we were going to see a different Mikita tonight because he's finally not a short stack. I think that question has already been answered. That's pretty wild, man. No regard at all for the 2.7 million that Maslak is playing. Yeah, and you can see he's willing to play hands here. Queen Jack suited in position. He's Yes, he's behind, but he's got the hand to put pressure on. It's going to be hard for Ace King to, to ship this pot um, if multiple bets are... Oh, multiple bets are definitely coming in here. Mikita has got the flush draw now. Check to him. Yeah, no, yeah, it's but... a pretty big play. King six suited though, like that's a that's another solver hand, really. Like, yeah. It's like ace five suited and then king six suited. I, I don't know why. I really don't know what the solvers find that uh, we never found. Look at this play oh. of VSM. He has ace king with the king of diamonds. I did expect him to call. I did not expect him to go for the check race. This man came here to play, mate. We do get the call from Mikita Basikowski. He does not get any help. What do you do now with Ace King? 1.1 million in the middle. What a way to start off our night, Nana. What the hell is happening? This is real scary. I think uh, the, the quarter pot kind of baited him to check raise Ace King. He is going to check now. It, I wouldn't have faulted him if this dude just shifted it on turn. I know it's super scary, but I feel like I'm only losing to a set. Like only a set of nines can really call mm. me. Um, so I think it would have been quite tempting. Uh, but does go check check on the turn. As played, I would keep checking Ace King here, which makes a lot of sense. Makita, can he bluff here? I think he's got a bluff. Uh, you see your opponent check raise you. is scary. But when he checks the turn and yeah. river, now it starts to think, no, he's not representing that overpair anymore. It actually looks like he made that. What a... sizing do we go for here? Is it half pot? Yeah, I was yeah. kind of feeling, I was like, I think half pot is just the right amount where it should work. And if you do get called, it doesn't hurt all that much because you still have 4.4 million. Let's see if VSM can make a sick call here on the river with Ace King. Daniel DeVorest tried it against him and he had King Eight of Hearts. This time it actually be the correct call. Yeah, this is wow, oh, big fold here. Nice play from my king. Man, Roddy, good pick, dude. Already shipping. Congratulations. Six million chips. Uh, but nah, Makita's doing good. Is that second hand yeah. or third hand? That was third the hand. Uh... Third. third hand because we had the king six all in that's actually kind of a mental play though like i love aggression and i love wild plays don't get me wrong but there is always a chance that mass like has kings or aces or a suited ace king and he just calls you there he actually has a big stack though so i'm surprised yeah. to see mikita do that no i mean you you see these guys like like adamo do these plays a lot where they just seem like they're shoving so many big blinds you, it happens a lot more when there's a micro stack out there. And there are two micro stacks remaining, Malinowski and Joyful, right? That means if as long as the guy understands ICM well enough, uh, they will over they will fold a large majority of their range. Like it wouldn't even surprise me that Ace King might even supposed to be a fold because of how short they're if if they understand ICM. If they don't, yeah, you might be burning a lot of chips. Uh, so you need to ask these questions. Are they folding like jacks there? I think so, uh, but I could be wrong. It just some people uh, interpret it. Okay, I mean obviously I'm not the pro, and I'm not gonna say that I just jam these two nines but though. This is the easiest jam in the world. I actually think that's hard. But if I would have jacks and the Mikita just all in five million chips, and I have jacks in the small blind, I am snap calling it like absolute snap I, call. I, I, I probably care. would too. Uh, but there are players out there that are super ICM aware, and yeah. they will do they. Had, and you need to know your opponents. I assume they, Makita would know this Russian player. Uh, you know, like Belarus is so close to Russia, and all these guys play for each other all the time. <laughs> oh, that's he, you do know that. That's impressive. Yeah, I do know that. Uh, but yeah, no. So VSMP, I would have loved that he jammed there. Uh, because when you see those flat calls, that obviously looks really weak. Um, Makita, chip leader, like you've got to expect this guy to be open like way wide. I would mm -hmm. love to have seen that uh, nines jam it in there. But, you know, some people are a little cautious because, yes, there is two micro stacks out there. So I guess maybe that's why he opted for just a call. Uh, I don't really love the call on the flop, though, because it was four way to the flop, right? Mm hmm. 
four ways. Yeah, but it's funny how poker logic and ICM, all of that works, because I do think jamming nines there is a million times scarier. Like, I understand why it's good. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of that money as well. And it's unlikely that Mikita is calling and then the other guys may not call because if they did have a better hand, they would have probably raced already. But I think mm -hmm. jamming nines there is way scarier than calling off jacks if the chip leader is jamming from the button. Like, to me, that's a no brainer. Sure, maybe it's ICM suicide, but I'd still snap call and just hope mm -hmm. that the, the poker gods reward me for my courage. <laughs> sure, sure. No, like, I'm not saying I would fold because. This should be all in and fold. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure the jacks would, would supposed to be. I'm not saying I would do it, but when there's really micro stacks, they're kind of like, you could potentially burning two pay jumps right away. All right, so that's the difference between 72K to 122K, which starts to yeah, add but, up quite a bit. Okay. The counter to that, though, I do feel is that in tournaments still, we can say that all the money is in the top three, maybe top four. Like, you know, limping like, your way to top seven instead of top eight is like, sure, is that is that why we're here? Like, I feel like that's not why we're here. I totally understand where you're coming from, Roddy, and that's how I would play too. Uh, but I'm just telling look, I can't change what the ICM calculators say. You know, like the ICM calculators say you need to play tight when calling all ins uh, because you're forced. There's always a chance you would bust. It. But when you shove... It they can't really call as wide because you know like they they don't want to risk their chips and that's kind of like the the logic to how all of the answers are solved mm -hmm. for you no that, that makes a lot of sense and i am sure that most people are on board with it but you know let's be real we are not here to talk about icm we are no. here to talk about pocket force flopping a set all the time <laughs> talk about doodles and talk about what we would do and have some fun and uh, I, I think the nines gem, yeah, I can see how that's a good opportunity, but I would find that terrifying if I would be in the same spot. Terrifying, but right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, into three other people, like, I don't know, man, that's that's so scary. Anyway, we had a fun hand uh, in the end there where Isaac Hexen obviously did take it down with King Queen in that four-way pot. And while we were discussing the previous hand, that means that Hexton is off to a pretty good start here, going up to 2.3 million immediately. And he yeah. should win this one as well if it just goes check. Well, it shouldn't go check, check, but he will definitely win this one. So yeah. what a start for Hexton. Almost 2.8 million now. Seat selection. You sit across from all the big killers, like, and you're, you got like some randoms around you. Like, that's a, that's a good seat, right? He's also got VSMP in the big blind when he's on the button. Like, you know, I think it's, it's a perfect seat. Um, I do want to go, uh, not, I don't think Makita will call here, right? Like, it just looks like a nasty board unless he's super suspicious. But on the last note about the ICM, mm -hmm. GG's got the ICM value button. I only yeah. know about that because uh, I think I saw him pads when he does his little uh, Instagram uh, story. Instagram stories. He talks it's like, like, how much does it change? It goes from 26 yeah. to 27. I know exactly the one video you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. So that's really cool. You know, like... Uh, I think that's a really cool feature that uh, no one provides in real time. Mm -hmm. It's nice, but also you don't want to pay too much attention to it. I think you should still just play your game, try to play your best. Nikita is deep in the tank here, and he does wow. make the call, so Haxton somehow gets a little bit of extra value, and he's off to an even better start. 2.9 million for the man who came in with, what was it, 2.1 or something, right? Or even less, was it 1.6? No, nah, one point, almost 2 million. So he's up a million chips, I believe, yeah. right? I mean, that's an amazing yeah. start for Hexton. Yeah, 1.94, 1.94. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Sick though. Selection. No, I can't believe he got value on that. Like, the thing is, they everyone knows Isaac Hexton used to be a heads-up player, and he was, like, super sick cash game player, and just, like, they always think he's bluffing. So then, like, they just send him free chips for no reason. I think Makita kind of... I mean, I understand why he called. He knows his hand looks a little weak, but... Yeah, Isaac Haxon getting free chippies here. We got a limp raise. 10 5 obviously one of the garbage hands out there trying to put pressure on that second place guy, which would work uh, because Pablo is probably limping like a really wide range here. A little fire. Actually, this is an annoying bet with Ace 10 here, man, because it feels like there's almost no good card other than yeah. it's a random Ace or a 10 that's not a hard. But to that sizing, you also really don't want to fold. Maybe you. Okay, he makes the call. Still has the best hand, but obviously it's an awful board for Ace-10 offsuit. I think if Mikita sizes up just a little bit, he'll take one it down. Bet. Yeah, one more bet will do it. It sucks that Mikita doesn't have a heart to go of his hand for backup, 
but I think he will probably fire one more just because about how small he fired on the flop actually makes any single heart call. So Pablo now, like, I mean, what can he do? Like, he's just got no heart back up. Mate, I, I'm loving Mikita as a chip leader. This is actually cool because we just haven't been able to see this from him in the past because he always came in with a small stack. Joyful at the bottom. King and Jack of Spades under the gun. Nine big blinds. Or even eight, yeah. eight point five big blinds. That's a, that's a jam. Think, yeah. We're gonna eat the big blind and small blind soon. King Jack suited good blockers of against the guys who would call your shove. Uh mm -hmm. I think this has to be a shove. King Jack also can maybe go into muck, but suited like just it's like if this decision is close, I just go if it's suited and I kind of push it in a little bit if more. If he if he falls, I do think limitless will jam, right? Yeah, probably. Um, if it gets folded to him. Yeah, probably. I think this is mandatory jam of King Jack suited. Oh, okay. It folds. It's a little tight. Maybe Opens the door for Limitless to maybe win a big blind and a small blind and some anties. Yeah, one of the worst aces to be jamming. All right, mm -hmm. six like usually like okay, it's five, maybe ace eight. Ace six is like literally the worst. Um, that's gonna go for it. No action. That's that's Good. the difference, right, between taking a shot or letting it pass. If Joyful would have jammed, he would have gotten it through. Uh, obviously, we know everything. He doesn't. Mm -hmm. I sort of get it, but I think I like your arguments there for the jam. Yeah, you're, especially big blind next hand, right? Like when you're in a, maybe two or three hands, you know? But uh, no, nah, I think he should have went for it. But you know what I thought about, too? I was thinking about it in the pre-show, too, was... Uh, Last week, we had a super fast show, 1.5 hours, right? In theory, if one of those big stacks cooler is someone, we could have the same thing happen, right? Because we got a big chip discrepancy here where we got like the five big blind guys out and like, look at this, two guys with less than 10 big blinds. We have other shows where the shortest stack was 20 big blinds. Like, we could knock out some guys real quick uh, based on the stack sizes. Oh, uh, this could show. be... Ooh, Limitless, let's go. Oh, no, Hexton, poor Hexton. <laughs> he shows, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, Limitless is like, I'm so glad I didn't jam the soul was special. And this is all going back as well to him actually winning the chips with the A6. Because if he didn't win that hand, then there is a chance that I think he might just jam A5 because the big blind was creeping in. Uh, funny how this all plays out. The butterfly effect. We're all connected. Have you watched the TV show Manifest, by the way? I've never even heard of it. Okay. It's pretty no. average. It's pretty average. Okay. No well, then crazy. thanks for trying to recommend me an average show. God damn it. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, there's wow. one more thing I want to point out, and this is super <laughs> irrelevant. And I don't cool. know if you'll like it or not that I'm pointing Probably it out. Won't. But do you remember when we had the European make it to our final table and his avatar? was just white, right? He just huh. selected it, and it was just pure white. Now we have another Finnish player make it to the final table, Andras Nasman. And look at his avatar. It's black. <laughs> <laughs> Can you not? OK, yeah. Cool story, but let's go back to his hand real quick, because we got big stack on big stack action. Tiny three bet here, right? Like, it's only five big blinds. Ace-10 offsuit. Oh, I think Pablo. He doesn't want to play pots with the chip leader, but when someone three bets you so tiny, what are you going to do? You're going to call your flop top pairs. Good spot for him. But, you know, Pablo's going to want to contain the pot. He's just going to check call. He's like, please check, please check, you know, maybe call again and, and go from there. I think Makita's got to bet this flop, though, just because if you three bet this hand, it's a pretty dry one. Mm hmm. It's going to be pretty tough for Mikita to win this hand because I don't really see Pablo going anywhere. It's honestly kind of a blank on the river and it shouldn't really change a whole, or excuse me, on the turn. It shouldn't really change a whole lot. I have a hard time believing that Mikita is like, well, if we bet now, are we wrapping aces and kings or ace queen? Like, is that what we're wrapping? Yeah, of course. Um, it's not unreasonable to represent those hands. It's just that I'd be thinking about what my opponent would call a pre flop, check called as flop, pocket. Pocket pairs, so you know, like sevens through through jacks, right? Makes a lot of sense. But ace queens, king queens, queen jack suits are very wow. big into play. He's going to go for a big bet. Now this bit, big bet is designed to put pressure on those pocket pairs. They probably will always fold anything lower than queen. And even, yeah, he's got a blocker to ace queen. I think this is oh, what a spot yeah. for Pablo. Like it's actually so annoying though. 
because oh my god, he makes Big the call. call and another queen on the river. I mean, that's gonna make him feel a lot better. Actually, a sick call, man. That's not easy because those are the hands where normally you can get stacked as well, and you hate yourself if you do go up against aces or kings. Will yeah. Mikita Batsikowski get rid of even more chips, or is he gonna give up? He has to give up here. Um, when you put a big bet out there, targeting those middle pocket pairs, expecting them to fold, and then you still get called, you got to weight your opponent on the king queens, the ace queens, and they would never in a million years fold, even if it's number two and number one in chip stacks, just because those hands would be way too strong. He still beats some hands, like ace five suited, a spade is possible, ace four suited, spade. I think they would check call, check call. So mm -hmm. you got to fold, you got to give up. Nice, uh, nice call by Pablo Silva on the turn. Very, very well done. Because I can actually see a lot of players falling there. We've got big hand alert here. Pablo Silva is going to open things mm -hmm. up. That's not that relevant. Uh, Joyful actually has a hand that maybe he feels like, you know what? If the chip leader opens, maybe this is my hand. No, it's not. But Isaac Hexton, he's got kings. Okay. And VSMP has ace queen suited. This is the chip leader opening, isn't it? Think about it. <laughs> Oh, wow. Just smooth call. Pocket kings here. Oh, oh. and it works. Wow. Isaac Haxton, how is your brain so big? Now you just <laughs> need to hold, but one of the aces has already been folded. So VSMP is looking for two out. Actually, I thought it was two, three, five. No, it's an ace and an ace only. Two outs for VSM. Otherwise, he is eliminated. That is not an ace. Isaac Haxton, the yes. smooth call with the kings. Wow, Haxon is just flying tonight. What a master. Yes, Isaac. Isaac Haxon always get top three minimum, Roddy. How do you, how, like, don't you know this by now? Like, Haxon just, I've never seen him do bad. But what a crazy nice call there, right? He knows when he's a three bets there, he has to be pretty strong just because, like, he shouldn't be risking his chips when there's such short stacks out there. That guy, the VM or whatever he just gave Malinowski and joyful a pay jump sick mm -hmm. i mean vsm clearly came to play because he did have a couple of hands early on and he was battling and i like the way that he played his ace king i thought that was uh, pretty cool too so seems like a fun player definitely left a little impression on us but this was unfortunately the wrong moment for him to send the ace queen suited can't even really blame him it's just that hexen had a monster and hexen played it like the magnificent human being that he is. Can Limitless jam again? Well, he's going to go for it, and he will get it through. Actually just picked up like a couple hundred thousand chips, back-to-back -back hands. I, I feel like tonight is shaping up to be a pretty epic night. I almost forget about the fact that there is a Finnish guy at this final table who has <laughs> won the High Roller Super Millions before, and he came in with the second biggest stack, but he has not played a hand yet. Hasn't played a hand. I don't... I think he's had many opportunity here. Oh, wow. call, Ace 10, call, let's call. go. All right, Joyful, or Joyux. My French is a little terrible. Ace 10 versus 7 4. Kind of a scary one because, oh my goodness, he has all the outs. <laughs> Joyful needs to avoid an 8, 3, 7, and a 4. And he does because it's paint on the river. So a shorter stack does get a little double. And K Mass, like, is like, damn it. I actually don't know if Mass, like, should have jammed 7 4. Like, sure, it's obvious that this guy wants pay jumps and that he will fold almost everything. But he already had, like, almost half of his stack in the middle. And 7-4 is, like, one of the worst hands you could possibly jam there. So I actually think that's one of these rare moments where even the tight guy should get a walk every now and then. Yeah, um, I don't know the answers to that, to that play. Uh... Yeah, no, it just, I guess it depends on it, what Joyful is willing to fold there. I wouldn't surprise me that's a fold. It wouldn't surprise me it's a, it's a jam, but uh, yeah, that's no, really weird. Now he's, he's so excited. He, he's hmm. connected his computer somehow. He, fl he flipped the desk, laptop flew <laughs> out, cable disconnected, no Wi Fi. He's, he's panicking right now. He's like, oh my God, my computer is down. Need to log in on my phone in my bed, like Rowdy, play some PLO. At 6 a.m. in the morning or whatever it was. Two nights. Two nights it happened. Then. Oh, well. We had some fun. Queen Jack versus 6-4. And Hexton does have the backdoor spades. And he obviously has backdoor straight draws. I actually think this is a mandatory call. If we are calling with 6-4, well, if we get a flop like this, 
we better stick around at least one or two streets. Might even be so good that he could go for a little race, but that seems very unnecessary against the chip leader. He does go for the race, though. Okay. I think it's an okay check race. Um, because if your opponent's sitting there with like eight, nine, like you, your hand is very vulnerable. You can get those hands to fold. No one's ever really going to three bet you on the flop. Uh, and you do have back doors that could maybe uh, take shape things up. I actually don't mind if he bets again here, too. I think he can get a better hand to fold. Like uh, a pocket pair that's under a 10, but higher than a 4. So 5s through 9s. I think those hands probably would fold. So I, I wouldn't mind he threw in one more bet. And if he does get called again, expect to have a lot of outs against like a Queen X. Yeah, it's a fun turn regardless, right? Because of the spades now. And obviously, Hexen can still make all the two pairs. He can make uh, trips. Goes for a pot size bet. I mean, Queen Jack has been very good to Pablo Silva before. And he made a very difficult uh, call with Queen Jack earlier against Mikita, and he was right. Can he do it again? Yeah. I think you can call one more top pair. Your opponent is repping kind of like a set usually here, or he doesn't have a set, and we know it's hard to make a set. I, I would call one more time. I wouldn't expect Haxon to be check raising here, potting turn with like King Queen or Ace Queen when he's the shorter stack with these tiny stacks out there. So, because then, then you set yourself up to actually lose all the chips on the river. So, I, I would think the Queen Jack would be a call here. Pablo Silva is probably wondering, why am I in these difficult spots yeah. all the time with Queen Jack? It's like, this final table hasn't even been live yet for 26 minutes. And it's the second time I face a monster bet with Queen Jack. The first time I was right. This one, even if he calls, there is such a good chance that he still gets sucked out. And he does make Great the call, call, and it's but... a flush. For Haxton on the river. Ay, ay, ay. And now Pablo Silva has the blocker too, right? He's got the jack of spades. Whew. Yeah. Wait, Haxton is the chip leader after this hand. How sick is that? <laughs> Haxton is so good. Huh? He just runs so good. Like you can never you can never fault putting putting money on Haxton. Like, really. Anyways. Um, and we know Haxton's going to value, but he's just thinking, should he go for a lot of chips or like a little bit of chips? Because I think he's put his opponent on queen, but you can't bet too big where the queen will hero fold. Uh, the, the problem one is... Five, what about one million? Half pot? I think half pot's okay. Just throw something out there. Because it's really hard for him to represent a bluff here. Yeah, I like this uh, really small bet. Trying to get just called by king queen. Because the five six got there. That's the problem. The main draw you're representing got there. Um, the back doors got there. Like yeah, if your opponent true. is sitting with just top pair, it's really hard to to think this guy's bluffing. That is actually true, and I think with how Pablo has played his hand, it is a little bit face up. So I actually think what you're saying is spot on. Maybe one million would just be too big. I yeah. I think Pablo, he might actually let this one go. He's like, I'm getting milked over here. I don't know <laughs> what you have exactly, but I know you got there. And it feels like you're taking me to value town, making me the on honorary citizen. I think he will let it go. See, the thing is, the only hand he really is doing okay against is like a block bet. Like some guy would check raise king, queen, or ace, queen. But the problem is he doesn't even beat those hands. No guy would bluff quarter pot the way the hand's been playing out as a bluff. Like, and you can't even find... While well, he calls, though, crying call just from the sizing... Yeah. Hex is the man, dude. Six million chips. <laughs> 6.1 million, and we've got a new chip leader. And Pablo Silva's like, damn it. This time, I should have just let it go early on. And yeah, can't always be right with the Queen Jack. Queen Jack gives, and Queen Jack takes. As Maslak opens things up for the first time tonight with an ace jack of hearts. And Andreas Nosman defends his big blind with king eight offsuit, and flop stop pair would be a fun hand. Uh, ace check. I think you do kind of a mixed strategy of betting and checking. Um, I can really see it go both ways. Third pot. Probably gonna see check call, check check turn, play river. I don't think ace check normally bets this turn card. They just mm -hmm. don't like value on themselves. They usually have outs in case, like a king queen, just like all right, I'm all in, and then you just kind of like bet fold. That's kind of bad. So I, I would check this ace check for sure. And the only hand that you would want to bet against is like a 10-8 or something, right? That may be called, but yeah. Well, jack 10, stick... queen jack, 
but yeah you don't want to open up the door where i mean i guess he's going to do it but i'm just saying like let's just say you bet here and the other guys so you know even like king nine he's like all right i'm all in and you just fold like clean outs that's kind of what i'm thinking <laughs> Andreas Nosman is showing us that poker really doesn't have to be that complicated of a game. You fold for a little while, your min payout goes from 56k to 94k, and then you do finally play one hand and you win almost a million chips. And you're like, cool. You second know, place. still sitting pretty. I started second place. I am still in second place. We could have a battle here between Maslek and Limitless, as Limitless has sure a bit over 10 big blinds, but it is still King Queen. He is the second shortest stack. We know that Limitless is not going to sit it out until Joyful is busting. But then again, it's King Queen offsuit. So there's also, I think we can just call, right? If you're Limitless, see if you flop top pair. If you flop top pair, you go all in. I think calling is fine. Yeah. So some things I would consider is that um, who's opening, what stack is opening off of. And I was going to say, since he's opening off a 20 big blind stack in middle position, I would think it's a little bit stronger. So I lean mm -hmm. towards call a bit more. Chip leader opening, I would jam more fold equity. Uh, so these are the things you need to think about: stack sizes of not just yourself, but the guy opening, and, and other stack sizes, how it changes things, right? So ace jack, they're like Mazak should be playing very tight in this spot. Mm -hmm. It's a very tiny bet, and Limitless does have clean outs to the nuts, so he decides to make a call. What he doesn't know is that Mazak like, has one of the cards that he needs. And Maslak's playing his hand well, somehow getting max value out of the King Queen of Limitless so far. Yeah, Maslak will probably bet again. Um, you know, he, he can't let a 10 get a free free card on him. Obviously, worse aces exist. I think that should do it for this hand, and Limitless will let go of it. Uh, well played on both sides. Blinds go up. Big blind is now 70k. Not quite Nenonoko's favorite blind level yet, but... <laughs> Yeah, All right. If it gets accent will gonna, fold. Actually, I'm gonna miss ahead. it, Roddy. I'm gonna miss the fifty hundred. You're gonna call me out. Watch. How have you not said anything? Not your favorite blind level. I can just I feel that coming. I mean, we we need something to talk about then. <laughs> All right, Pablo. Uh, so we've been uh, changing chip leaders quite a few times now, right? Because Makita obviously was started day chip leader crushing. Pablo turned into chip leader now. Isaac Haxton. Let's see top pair top kicker for pablo gonna get some chips back or is this guy run too good where he just hits a random king or queen i kind of feel like the 10 on the turn is all right not quite the 10 on the turn it goes check check immediately let's see if pablo silva decides to bet his ace nine here knowing that it's most likely the best hand um one more thing by the way since you pointed out that pablo silva put on the helmet immediately and now it's the second week that we see helmets being used quite early on it could be because of the gifts, right? Because it's right. a new future. People can spam gifts now. A lot of people have fun with it. But there's also always guys that just don't enjoy it. And I'm like 99% sure that if you put a helmet on, you don't see any gifts whatsoever. You just see the poker action. So maybe Pablo Silva just really hates uh, the gifts. And that's why he puts the helmet on. Yeah, no, I, I think you're spot on. You got some good reads on the random and stuff, Rowdy. You do know your stuff on, <laughs> on that stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, it was probably the gifts. I want to see some gifts. I think Makita, I remember he used the Snapchat, uh, Snap Cam or whatever you call it, uh, way back in when he reached the final table last year. Uh, so, you know, Makita, if you're watching, let's see some of those new gifts. Goes check, check on the river. Pablo Silva does win a pot of nine big blinds. And we'll take it from there. And I hope that Limitless is able to run it up just a little bit. Jack 10 suited versus Jack 9 suited. One of these hands that could be randomly kind of big. Yeah, yeah I think it'll go check, though. It's a little different situation. but um. So Adamo was the guy to put on the helmet first. Who was it? It was Adamo, right? And he caused, a ch he caused someone else to put a helmet on. After that, yeah. I forget who it was. I mean, last week we obviously had Dollar Vic, who was. Uh, <laughs> we try not to speak of that guy, okay, Roddy? <laughs> a little too chatty. Jack Nine is going to bet a very random board, 773 Rainbow. What does Pablo Silva do? He does two. Oh, ooh, like this is exactly what I meant. When I said this could randomly get big, I didn't mean it was going to get big pre flop, but I actually thought that. With certain board layouts, you know, they can both think they have the best hand. But of course, they are two of the biggest stacks. So 
I don't think that Pablo Silva is going to go super wild here. But yeah, lose some chips be. in there. Mm -hmm. We'll see some chips fly. But you can already feel that they're building a dynamic, I guess is what you're kind of implying, right? Because they didn't have that ace-10 hand with the queen-jack while check raise here. Yeah, they just got this funny dynamic going on. Obviously, Pablo is out of position, which I didn't like. And so I didn't really want to pick him in the pre-show. Um, usually, the guy in position has got the power. Check. There's a call. I wonder if Pablo bets the river, maybe go for like a block bet value. Yeah. Or is he small, like 300k, yeah. I think. Three on the 330. 420. Yeah. 420 be good. I mean, but it's still kind of scary, though, because you're out of position. Of course, Mikita could have a seven. He could maybe have a better jack, but that's a bit unlikely. But a seven is still within the realm of possibilities. I see pretty big sizing by Pablo. No fear. So it's convinced that he's good and well, yeah. it's a pretty sick bet. It's kind of like a value block bet a little bit too, right? Because when you get raised here, when you check, you let your opponent dictate the sizing, but when you bet, uh, you know, your opponent can't actually represent the seven. Like if Makita raising it to try to rep the seven now would be super insane because it's so easy for Pablo to have the seven himself and play it this way. So by mm -hmm. betting yourself, you kind of kind of set the price and you kind of block value bet here. Yep. I think both of them are truly wondering if they're good or not. Pablo yeah. seems to be pretty sure that he's good. Makita is like, it's a very complicated hand. And Andreas was also giving us the L key so confusing. And I can kind of get that because just following this hand, if you obviously don't know the cards, you're probably like, what is happening here? I would not fault Makita for calling here. Obviously, he's got one of the best hands in this spot. If he can ever be good here from a value bet point of view, like both, uh, he's like Pablo's value betting, like a jack eight, like you got to call. Yeah, but that's uh, like the only one though, because like any other jack is better. Jack nine, I guess you chop. If there's bluffs though. Like maybe yeah. Pablo makes some crazy bluff of like eight nine, oh, maybe some hearts. It's possible. We know Pablo's active. Not sure how much these two actually play with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, Makita but putting does... your opponent on jack eight is oddly yeah. specific. Mikita does make the call, and he will receive the bad news that he has been pipped by one. Pretty sick hand by Pablo Silva. Now he's back up to five point three million. But Mikita might get some chips this time around because Limitless could very well send it here. I don't think Mikita will let go of a screen. Nah. Yeah, well played by Pablo. Really sick hand by him. Yeah, he's he's got a swinging session today. But uh, this is all in territory. Mikita looking for some chips. But our man Malinowski not in good shape here. Nope. But well, we have seen this last week. It doesn't really mean a whole lot. Uh, that's not a great start. Maybe a five for some chop sweats. Oh, Dead. drawing that. Unfortunately, that is the end for Limitless tonight. He will hit us with the good game. He goes out in seventh place. Walks away with $94,000 and Joyful gets another pay jump. And Andreas is wondering why poker is so easy. <laughs> yep. Well, cool. Um, I not, don't think there's... Well, no, Joyful should be defending this 8-9 because you got to look at the other stacks out there. You don't normally play 8-9, but you're so short. Just call. Hopefully flop something. Go for it. Wow, he just snap folds. Okay, never yeah. mind. But that's what I would have done. So consider calling there. I don't think it's bad, but I think that Joyful right now is feeling it, man. I think he's like, this is going so well. It's pay jump after pay jump, baby. Let's go. If I don't make a yeah. sound, they may actually forget about me. Maybe Maslak goes all in and he dukes it out and I get another pay jump. And the next one is sure. pretty big, of course. It's $36,000 extra. So I, I get what you're saying, but I also understand the fault. I don't think it's right, but I do get it. Yeah. Uh, I think Isaac. Oh man, I'm not gonna get. The I was thought I was gonna get a free flop, but this is definitely all in fives. It's just Maslak has to fold so so wide because of how short Joyful is. Like even if Maslak has pocket sixes and sevens, they're going straight back into the muck. Perfect jam here. Accents just. <laughs> I don't know. It's just stars always align for this guy. He's just so solid. Accent has been perfect so far. Uh, even the hand that he didn't end up losing the king queen. What did he really lose there? It almost felt like the bare minimum. Now, no, what? No, okay, I want to change my pick of the week. What was that, Mikita? Mate, what was that? Do you want to win it today or not? I'm actually Play. really surprised he folded there. Yeah, because his stack size is uh, 
not that bad. It's not like there's some dude of 10 million chips that's going to three bet you every single hand, right? Like this, I think he could have got away with that one and, and still sees take it down pre or maybe flop. But yeah, he would have been out flopped anyways. But I just thought it was weird. Yeah, that's well, there's, there's two more streets to go. You're really uh, you're telling me you think pocket fours would lose on this board against King Jack? <laughs> yeah, I guess the river would have hit it, wouldn't it? Yeah, he would have yeah. seen that flop, check, check, turn, bink it against King Jack. That would be <laughs> such a clean board, right? The Jack six three, King four. <laughs> <laughs> right, it'd be a little different. Wow, well, overbet by Andreas and Hexen. Let's go with it. They take a look at the they do see it, the rabbit hunting guys. It was a four on the river, by the way. No, <laughs> so fast. Yeah. Um, but still, wow. I, I thought I liked Nikita Batsikowski, but we're open folding pocket force while playing 4 million chippies. Uh, I don't know if I can get on board with that, mate. Over 50 big blinds, right? Well, how much does he have? He has a crap ton. Why do you think I left him lift that pick up to you? Because I was like, this guy he doesn't seem like in touch with our show, pocket force in the muck. <laughs> I think Mikita's like, I'm not going to put a helmet on the table. I'm going to put a helmet on the YouTube channel. He probably muted us immediately. <laughs> He's like, can I just mute the guy who always talks about pocket toys? <laughs> Ace five, this has to be a jam. Uh, you're, you're running out of time. Maslak is going to wait you out. And he did. He, he just folded pocket sixes last hand. So, like, yeah, you got to go. Nice. Well done by Joyful or Mary. <laughs> go with Just go joy. I like joyful because the name, the joy is there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Queen Jack. Okay. Queen Jack. Pocket nines. Yeah, Queen Jack probably go in the muck unless he wants to three bet it. Don't think he will. Nines, I think, needs to jam this spot. And I know it's a little scary because there is a 10 big blame out there, but nines is such a vulnerable hand. Lots of fold equity. Chip leader opening. I don't know. It just seems like a jam to me. What do you think? I think Mass like will jam. Because he actually, even though we haven't seen him make an epic run yet, he's, he never strikes me as afraid. I feel like he's clearly in touch with how you are supposed to play. And yeah, well done. He, yeah. he jumps. Maslak is actually pretty good, man. At first, I wasn't quite sure what to think of him. You know, the, the red cap avatar. I was like, what is this? What are we dealing with? Is this one of these Russians that just has too much money because of an oil refinery somewhere? Or, you know, he has he's running his gas company. But it seems like Maslak is just pretty good. No, definitely a good player. I just think he hasn't had opportunity to, to make a deep run. Never comes in with a big stack. Um, definitely a professional. And yeah, no, he's kind of just doing his thing, but no opportunity really to to crush yet. How do we play the ace? Queen, 20 big blinds on the button. I would, I would open jam this personally, uh, but it looks like he's going to go to raise call. Um, I raise it, it kind of just depends on how short the short guy is. Mm -hmm. Uh this short, he's he's like forced all in real soon. So that makes me lean towards jamming. And shutting out Isaac Hacks and be able to defend and move you off of flops or out flopping you here. So in this spot, like he's on pace to lose. But I think he thought his ace queen was so good that he actually hoped Hexen would jam on him or would three bet. Because if Hexen yeah. would three bet, I do believe he would snap all in, of course. Hexen mm -hmm. makes two pair, but he already had two pair, but he goes from a pair of fours to a pair of sixes. So uh, now at least we're beating pocket fives. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, but yeah, the six four is good. No, I he would 100% call off a jam. Yeah. Um, yeah, the pay jumps start to get a little bit more juicy as a couple more guys bust out. So that's why I lean towards trying to take it down more. Like if it was an eight or nine players left, then I like raising and trying to get a little more action. But I see them matters a bit more the deeper you go into the tournament. Yeah, yeah. Ace Queen here actually has to call in my opinion. Uh you still got the best hand a lot. Okay, he's, but he's I guess he's you know what? I guess he's playing tight cuz he's like, okay, I might call this, but if I get put on the river I'm 100% folding cuz this dude is short out there. That's why I kind of like the game plan of jamming if you weren't going to continue Ace Queen mm -hmm. on that board. Yeah. I mean, I was unfortunate as well. And obviously, Hexen getting a pretty nice turn card, even though he already had a pair. It's, just, it's obviously better than seeing a 7 or an 8, because if then another 7 or an 8 rolls off, suddenly you feel real good with Ace High on 7, 7, 10, 10. And if you already have two pair, then you're not too worried about the board pairing one more time. Well, yeah, uh, unfortunately, I think Maslak was just hoping that Hexen was going to get a bit out of line pre-flop, thinking that he was capped because of uh, the ICM spot that he'd be in. Didn't quite work out.
I still don't hate the way uh, Mass Select played it. I think he played it fine. Axon calls here with the Jack Nine. Yes, he does. Um, I got a question for you later. It's not totally irrelevant. Maybe I don't. I won't have a question for you. No, no, no. I want to know. Come on, mate. Don't do <laughs> no, this. no. I'm just saying. Are we still? Are we still in Pudgy Penguin? Interested in buying one of those? Yes, we are very interested in buying yeah, a Pudgy Penguin. They're coming down. I think in a couple of weeks we got we got something to work to work on, Roddy. They're like one point one seven five. So like they 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 shot up to like two, and they're coming down a little bit. Yeah. We'll talk. We'll talk soon again. I'll talk to you again soon. You'll set it all up for me, and I'll just uh, I'll make the payment, and then I'll be the proud owner of some <laughs> digital art. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, no NFT today, is there? On his tape, on tape. What a shitty final tape, huh? No, not shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we have one? Didn't yeah, he already week. bust? No. Uh, uh, what was it? The pre-show. I saw some penguins, but I guess it was pre-show. The hand history. Uh, I was looking at. So Makita check called as a pre-flop raiser with his big hand, trying to contain the pot a little bit, underrepresent his hand, maybe get a big stack to to multi-barrel him. Check check turn. I think Makita has incentive to bet now. I guess he could go both ways. Actually, no, I don't mind if he bets or check. Um, he's going to bet himself, but he shouldn't get any action. I'm trying. I'm looking. What are, What are you looking at? I'm looking at the profile. I got the the little profile page up. I'm trying to see if there's a penguin. I don't see no penguins. Nope. There was definitely in the hand history. There were a couple. Oh, of, uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's probably Daniel Devoris. Like that guy yeah. always has a penguin and he calls no, the king high on any board. <laughs> there was one more though. Let's see what Pablo Silva decides to do here. He makes the call from the small blind with nine, eight of clubs. I don't hate it. Board is six, four, deuce, two diamonds. So he couldn't have missed any harder if he tried. For yeah. Haxon, it also doesn't look that pretty. Pretty dry board. Haxon's probably thinking, okay, what hands are you flatting from the small blind? No, we'll continue. And will you continue with like high cards? Hypothetically, be C bets. Um, a lot of pocket pairs. Yeah, the tiny play. pocket pairs. And even some of those tiny pocket pairs are over pairs here, right? <laughs> well, that works out. Well done by Haxon. He wins another one, chips back up to 6 million. Axon usually is not the chip leader at this point of the tournament. He usually, sh he's like always like in the middle, right? Like this is a, it's a different Haxon, you know, today. Like usually he takes his time, gets like the perfect aces at the right time, you know, and he's up to chip lead and steals it. Uh, but no, this is a different show right now. I'm actually surprised that Makita's in fourth, but he still has a really healthy stack. Yeah, I know. He's which fine. Is funny. He's fine. Yeah. Sure, he had a few more chips when it all started, but. It's basically just one hand that went a bit wrong, but you can see that he's a little bit more timid and he lets go of it this time around. Maslock jams the A6, slightly better than 7 4 offset. I think he was actually kind of hoping for a call here, hoping to get it in good. Joyful will not take the bait. I think Mikita's totally fine. This doesn't mean that much. Ace, Queen, and Pocket Eights. We also have a suited Ace Deuce. Could be a fun yeah, hand. I don't think that Ace Deuce is going in at all. Um, Pablo likely will. Well, he, I'm surprised he just straight up folded bucket eights there. All right. I think it's because Andreas. It's, I think it's because Andreas is deep and has been pretty tight and timid so far, right? A Ace King and Hexton has pocket fours in the small blind. Don't you dare, Hexton. Don't you, this, you have so many chips, mate. Not calling here would be uh, criminal, as a StarCraft player once said. <laughs> All right. That is. Uh... It's not a nice position, but you are big stack. Oh, he's out. Come on, flop it. Oh. Ooh, what a flop for Jack hey. Seven of Clubs, though. Pocket Fours is the best hand. No, but <laughs> Pocket Fours would win a lot. But if Pocket Fours would win on this board against those two hands, well, then I will not be folding Fours for the rest of my life. Well, this is actually a third uh... card. We should see all five cards. All right, let's see if you think Pocket Fours would hold. That would be, no, really be insane. If Pocket Boys would actually hold on this board, on this flop against Jack Seven of Clubs and Ace King, that'd be uh, pretty insane. That's almost like sucking out, even though you had the best hand. Okay, no. you're right. Good call. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's like 30 outs or something. <laughs> I think I would check with these two clubs. 
Um, if my opponent has a jack, he's going to bet anyways. And if he's got a bluff, he might be tempted to bluff this board. Uh, I think I, you know, he can go for a little check raise. He might just bet near pot. Oh, he bets tiny. He's trying to, he's trying to bait like uh, a chop raise. So say like they both have a jack, right? Like Pablo might. Oh, maybe I can represent the flush. Move this guy off. A, Pablo does uh, have the ace of clubs. Like it's obviously not needed to get super out of line here. But Pablo may just think, you know what? Yeah. Let's let's make a move. But it's the not problem, necessary. The problem is if he makes a say like one million, the jack will call anyways, like side call. Um, so you kind of want like a ace jack with an ace of club or something, like where you the side call is where you still chop against. Uh, here, yeah, like even if you made it two million, I don't think Andres is folding a jack. What if he? Yeah. What? what? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that yeah. was uh. I mean, I, we were waiting for a while. I feel like there was a build up. I was like, he's going to send it. And I don't know what that was. That was Yeah. Not... He's trying to bluff a block bet, like a top pair queen. So say like Andres had like a king queen. I think that would be top pair. He probably would fold to that race. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really in love with the play, but uh, that's his logic. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but it was, I think it was too small to really work, but it's okay. It's obviously well, because Andreas had such a monster, right? Maybe if Andreas had a much weaker hand, then yeah, maybe we would have had something to talk about. But now it just kind of silly. New chip leader, barely playing a hand. Wow, he's angry. And... He's angry. <laughs> sick. That's a sick play. Yeah, lead a hand. So how, what what happened here exactly? Was just uh... open. Uh, so new chip leader. He just opened the. How many X is this? Do you know? Yeah, that's like four. more than 4X, 4.5X. That's what I was yeah. wondering about. Did he just open 4.5X from the small blind into the big blind? Is that what happened? Yeah. And Pablo is just super sick read, honestly. Wow, six is in the muck. Fours have to go with it now. Wow, opportunity. But yeah, no, that was sick hand. Three betting. I think Pablo just read, okay. Why? When a chip leader actually opens this big into another big stack, they often do just have garbage like are they really doing that aces they'd like just want folds and pablo just that's why he didn't even re-raise that small if you saw it. it was like such a tiny re-raise but if their hand is so garbage they literally can't even do anything against it yeah insane well the wild hand there but andreas does pick up the next one with king four he's got queens this time around pablo silva has a mini solve special not quite the ultimate but Let's go of the ace four immediately. Andreas is not going to get any action on his premium. Feels like other than Hexton getting the full double with his kings, we haven't really seen any uh, premium hands win proper pots so far. Yeah. Andreas is a chip leader, though, man. Like, I feel like he's barely played a hand. Mm -hmm. But when he does, it counts. Maslak with ace three on the button. He still has over 10 big blinds. Obviously, he's playing 13, 14 bigs over here. If he open rips it, he's in trouble because Hexton will call. Yeah, but I don't think you should be jamming ace three here, right? Like, wow, he's actually going to, to do it. He's at risk. Yeah, but okay. What what if Hexton goes all in now? Can you still fold? No, I don't think so. You already put in. Wow. <laughs> I actually think there is a world where he might fold. I don't know yeah, if it's but this he, one. If, if it, yeah, no, nah, you can't make it that big and fold. That was, I think it was a misstep. All right, ace three offsuit does flop a three, but Hexton flops the jack. We need another three or Maslak is out and Joyful gets another pay jump. <laughs> that yeah, is not a three, way too many pips. GG, Hexton says, thank you very much. Wins a 2.3 million pot and Maslak goes out in sixth place. Yeah, it was... You, you know, know, if it's small blind, big blind, it's one thing, right? But from the button, 13 big blinds, ace three offsuit. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what happened there. It's actually the ace queen hand is why he actually jammed. Like, I think he, he regretted not jamming the ace queen before. And he's like, oh, I'm going to do the same thing now with ace three. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's such a weaker hand. Joyful is really short. The blinds are now 80,000. I, I think it's... I think he kind of regretted that ace queen, and that's why they made him jam. He's like, "All right, is he Haxton really going to pick up a hand here?" And now he's out of a pay jump. Mm -hmm. Wow, so it's nice for Joyful. I can't believe that guy got another pay jump. 
158k minimum and i mean he's still in it and all these guys are kind of crazy we are entering our first break we've lost a lot of players by the way four players being eliminated at the final table in the first hour is a bit more than we normally lose we hope you guys are having fun watching the high roller super millions season two week 27 we do this every tuesday it's been a lot of fun season one was good season two has even been better and will pablo silva call with king jack offsuit he will another player at risk can the deuces hold nano looking good don't pair that board though that's always scary okay chop out chop outs <laughs> yeah <laughs> the king reject to win 10 or 5 to chop could be an ace or a deuce that's good a three is good as well joyful last hand before the break gets the double and he's up to 1.1 million he's like what is this place i've never seen that many big blinds and that is going to do it a really fun first hour obviously subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't done that yet check out gg poker over at youtube if you are watching it elsewhere and we'll see you guys in four minutes and 40 seconds for hour number two hi i'm the new daniel negrano and i'm the old daniel negrano we both represent online poker sites. We both love Hold'em. I mean, we're basically the same person. Absolutely, man. I used to love watching you play, the way you would read people, call out their hands, and then, of course, call anyway. Oh, stop. I'm blushing. But old Daniel, man, I got to ask, man, what uh, what's up with this look you got going on here? You you tired or something? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of all these freaking beats I've been taking. It's freaking ridiculous. Look at this motherfucking hand. This motherfucker is calling the freaking turn with this piece of freaking hand. Freaking absurd. Whatever, I don't even know why I'm so upset. I mean, bad beats, they're just part of the game, right? I mean, they don't really have to be. You see that? I took a bad beat, then GG Care took care of some of my losses. Hashtag, thanks GG. You think uh, maybe I could borrow that laptop and play a little while? No, definitely not. Just say GG to that site you're playing on over there. You just think you're so clever. Nope, just a good read. GG, poker star. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my God. Michael Adamo is the best.
Welcome back to the second hour of week 27, season two. We are down to five already, but at least our short stack did get a double in the final hand before the break. It's been a fun final table. It's been fast, but I do feel... No, no, I don't know if it's me, but season one was good, but I really feel season two has been even more fun than season one. And uh, season two is only halfway through, as you always say, right? Adama's only got one win. He's got multiple wins to go for season two, and like this one's been quick, like... Yeah, this, is, this could be a real fat. I mean, we've busted out all the short stacks. To be fair, these big stacks, uh, the all the remaining four guys enjoy it for have a lot of chips, so it could still be quite long. But uh, yeah, short stacks are going out quick. It's been good so far. Yeah, yeah but I don't know it's been good because it's going fast. This has been a fun first hour. We've had plenty of episodes in the past where it's like, okay, like one or two interesting hands in the first hour. I feel like we had six or seven fun hands already so far. This has been a good final table once more. Joyful gems, the deuces. He's like, deuces never loses, baby. I just got the double with the deuces. And it should work. Actually, a big play by him. I like it a lot. I think he knows it too. There's no one even close to uh, busting out. So he can go for these plays a bit more. Um, yeah, no, I, I like this play a lot. King Queen actually thinking about it. He knows that Makita is unlikely to be bluffing. I mean, to be waking up with a slow played hand, so he can probably go with King Queen if he wants to. Could fold. It's a tricky one. It's impressive that he's thinking about it because I think I would snap fold yeah. here and be like, "Ah, that's too scary with Makita still behind me." Joyful has been tight, but he also probably knows this guy might have been waiting out other guys and they don't exist anymore. Two extra mm -hmm. big blinds from Makita in the pot overlay, so it. Wouldn't be a bad play to go if as long as he's jamming any pocket pair. Wow, there we go. And the deuces do it again. Last hand before the break, he got the double with deuces. First hand after the break, deuces again. And they are good, it's a similar board. Ah, there's the king though. Now we need a deuce and a deuce only on the river. Last time it was a three, could be a deuce, three or an ace. It is a three again. So that's unfortunately the end for Joyful. Now we're down to the final four, our fantastic four, our marvelous four. And all of them have plenty of big blinds. It's going to be, uh, this honestly feels to me like, all right, full reset, shuffle up and deal, weapons ready, let's dance. This is actually pretty cool. Yeah, this is a, the cool stack sizes too, right? Like 50 big blind for the shortest stack. Um, here to play. Like Andres is actually the, the chip leader. The guy hasn't played that many hands, but he plays them well. Three bet. Pablo, these guys have been going at it. I feel yeah, like yeah. the King Queen's not folding. I don't know. What do you think? No, I don't think he's folding. Yeah. It's a bit scary, but I think he's calling. He's no, he's gotten three bet by Makita by like an ace 10 offsuit. So it wouldn't surprise me that he thinks he's getting three bet by like King Jack offsuits and stuff like that, where he could be dominating. I would I would continue his King Queen. He might even be thinking about four betting. It's a good hand to four bet yeah. with. Personally, I, I like four bet a little bit more. With Out King of the Queen three offsuit. options, I think folding is the least likely. I think we'll see at least a yeah. call, but we might see a four bet, and it is a four bet. Pablo Silva, he's got his gloves on. Yeah, it's the right. I think it's the better move. Really nice play there well by done. King Queen offsuit. Power poker. Uh, these guys are sick. All four of them, I think, probably proper sickles. I think at this point, if I could reconsider, I'm like, I like Isaac Haxton, you know, Haxton yeah. with chips. <laughs> you always pick Haxton, but this is going to be good. I love, yeah, I love me some Haxton. Um, I, I, I really am impressed cool, with Pablo, by the way. though. Yeah, sorry, yeah, I'll let you finish. But this is cool because remember what Same happened thing. last time? Deuce five and some random other seven five. Well, mm -hmm. Andreas is kind of doing the same thing, a very big open, but this time he's actually doing it with ace queen. Pablo will make the same move. He three bets again. This time he's going to get punished, though. Yeah. I don't mind Pablo. Make... It is true that Andres should be doing the same thing as the same play. And why well, he just calls here. I, I can't blame him, right? It's 50 big blinds that he, if he jammed in, it's wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of bad. But I wouldn't have fault him if he jammed. But he probably does, he doesn't know. I don't think enough time has passed where 7 5 offsuit has shown up. Uh, yeah, yeah, he wouldn't know. Not. Just a little bit short, right? So Pablo, though, one of the worst boards, really. Like, uh, yeah, just just an awful board to see bet because you're not really sure where your opponent at is if he does call. Because he could have like a middling hand, he could have a good hand. You just have no idea. 
So check, check on the flop. I think ace queen is okay to check and okay to bet. I can really see it go both ways. You guys gonna check. Andreas will check once more. I think Pablo Silva at this point knows that he kind of needs to bet if he wants to win this hand because he's really not beating anything other than king queen. Yeah. But yeah, he beats king queen. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Block bet. Very fast bet, by the way. Do you see how fast he bet? Yeah, it's a block bet. Um, block value. It's okay. It's really hard to get bluff raised here. Uh, you you could represent the ten so hard that Pablo shouldn't really try to represent the ten. It's also re raised pot. Like, was he really re raising a ten pre flop? Not likely. Yeah, no. I think. Uh, but you know, he did make that little funny bluff raise last time. But he's like not doing it again. Nice play. Mm -hmm. This guy just. He doesn't play the most hands, but he plays every single hand he enters well and wins it. Oh, pocket fours. Go, talk. Yeah, but ace 10, ace queen, mate. I don't know if we're going to see a whole lot of the pocket fours here. And even the queen nine of diamonds, like all four of them have a reasonable hand. Like, oh, snap. Man, he plays so fast. Wow, I want to see a heads up between Andreas and Romashka. That would honestly <laughs> put all my poker casting to good use over here, because, or excuse me, all my StarCraft 2 casting. These guys play fast. You know, I don't think four bet jam is out of the question for Pablo or just four bet. Like he's he's he always kind of goes for it. he like he he sees spots. I think he's actually expects the chip leader to make plays. Nice play from Pablo, man. Like he's on point, isn't he? Yeah. Sick. Well done. Hexton with the open. Andreas with the snap three bet, and Pablo Silva takes his time. He goes for the all in. Next hand went by real quick. Everyone had garbage. Hexen gets the walk with nine deuce. And these four are just, you know, you're watching four animals go at it right now. This is really cool. Yeah. And then they're fighting hard. You know what, though? If this was a live setting, I'd be like, hey, can you like move over a little bit? Because like there's a lot of space. We can spread out the table. <laughs> oh, that's the deal. Uh, can you square the table for us? <laughs> mate, if I would have said that, you would have, you would have given me so much crap. You'd be like, yeah, cool story, bro. Like the most <laughs> irrelevant comment of all time. <laughs> all right. This is funny because, you know, usually there's one guy at the other table that you have history with. Pablo's surrounded by two guys with crazy history against him, right? Because him and I just been going at it, Makita. And like Isaac Haxon always on the sidelines, like, yeah, leave me alone, but give me some chips here and there. Mm hmm. Axon now is the guy from the Godzilla movie. And he sees the animals go out. He's like, let them fight. He'll just do his thing. <laughs> we'll see. A7 wow. makes the call. And somehow, Andreas gets the nuts on the turn. What the hell was that? That's like the last thing I ever expected after Pablo was sitting on Queen 10. So I'm sick. getting these like uh, bad blood vibes like between Andrew, like. It's starting to get personal. Everyone's getting yeah. personal with Pablo Silva. I know. I'm getting like a little uncomfortable almost. It's like yeah. exciting. It's fun. It's like a, a fight just wow. broke out in the bar. We do have a third diamond roll off. So, yeah, no, they just at each other's throats. To be fair, Pablo is warranted, right? Because he's been attacking like them both and fight resisting and everything. There's another bet. Nice big chip lead. Yeah. For our man, Andrews. and again, he wins a pot, and it's a big one immediately. I don't know how he won this. Nikita could be in a bit of trouble here, as uh, so he probably thinks that this is his hand to finally win some chips again. Yeah, but good spot to just... just call, though. They're kind of deep, and is uh, yeah, don't really want to three bet this one, you know, mm -hmm. a little funny one. Should be better board for Nikita than it is for Haxton, exactly. So, I expect Haxton to check a lot, or he'll bet like a quarter pot, usually just. See what happens, but uh, yeah, so bet a little bit. Just king high. Yes, you got the king of spades. Who over? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're always looking for something, and you're like, well, <laughs> I found I found this something I'm looking for, and that is the king of spades. And, uh, maybe a jack ten run out wouldn't be all that shabby either. So <laughs> you make the call. For Hexen, there really isn't anything to work with. Yeah, I start with a check um decide if i want to pick off some misdraws on the river or not i think makita's king queen is good enough to just keep checking though he will win showdown like this um i think so yeah mm. he uh, wins showdown and you represented misdraw way too much 
Axon picks it up, so 700,000 chips going his way. For Mikita, it is really time to turn things around, even though he still has plenty of big blinds. When the blinds go up, he still has over 30. We got six hands away from Nanonokos. You might get a couple cards here with your pocket fives, by the way. I know you're distracted, but I don't like what I see. Uh, yeah, I might. He also might jam straight up. No, nah, that's so, it would be so excessive. Yeah, but he might. Trust me, Roddy. Okay, he's just going to, oh, good hand. Yeah. No, I, I think jamming five said I think that'd be very unnecessary. Very, very unnecessary. Oh good. So it's show a, obviously that's it's for now. like one big blind. You know, you, you, to win one big blind you're risking over thirty. Like that seems silly to me. Yeah. They do it. But I take it down. Yeah. Sometimes, but not Hexton, mate. Come on. You calling Hexton a bingo player or what? <laughs> <laughs> all righty no i'm just like i'm looking at these stats and i'm just wondering like if i should show you some uh, really risky nft or not that's what i'm that's crossing my mind a little bit <laughs> save it for a rainy day i'm enjoying my uh, fantastic four action over here six three of clubs against queens andreas with the snap race again action let's go of it immediately no action on the premium it's been such a smooth sailing so far for ducks he is a previous champ we are looking at two guys right now out of the four that have won it before. Hexton, of course, a previous winner. And Andreas Nosman, also known as Ducks, a previous winner too. <laughs> Goes for it. He really loves the big sizing from the small blind into the big blind of Pablo Silva. Silva is like, well, I did this the last three times, so I can do it again, even though I've got Ace-King this time around. This is fun, man. These guys going at it. Yeah, it's a huge size for it. He can go 3.5x and get the same effect, I'm pretty sure. But uh, just trying to put maximum pressure. He plays fast in that spot. Six deuce of hearts. Probably start with a limp. Um, little freebie. Free three cards. Maybe four. We'll see. Queen deuce is kind of bad. Maybe he'll raise it. Maybe yeah. he'll try to represent something big. To be fair, Pablo should be raising um, value hands in this spot because the shorter guy has incentive to take free flop. So nice play. Well done, Mikita, showing us there is life in the old dog. He's definitely not out of it yet. One double, and he's completely back in the mix with the big guys. Queen 8 is going to limp in the small blind. Hexen has ace 3 offsuit. Let's see what he decides to do. Could raise it up. Yeah, um, ace 3 is one of those hands that don't play that well post flop, so you kind of want to just take the raw equity. Just raise. I like it. I love a poker tonight. I feel like we have plenty of episodes where it's like, okay, it's fun, it's exciting, and we see some wild things. I feel like tonight we're just witnessing some proper high level poker. Yeah. And it's not just pre flop poker. We get it's a lot of post flop. Uh, that's always the, the fun ones, the ones where you learn. <laughs> wow, five, three. Do you like this? This personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super personal. I love it. These are like the two guys that even when they buzz they DM the other guy want to play heads up. Like let's go heads up right now. Heads up for rolls, mate. Come on. <laughs> Remember what, there was an episode recently. Remember the guy was like Jason Kuhn, he was kind of annoyed about the the guy, like, oh, I should come visit America more. I forget who it was, and like it started yeah. to get a little personal. Wow, nice was, race. Wasn't that uh Patrick? It was one of the Austrian guys, right? Who has one? Uh, I can look it up for you if you care. It, oh, it was um what's his name? Wattenlos, that guy. Well, was, was it was Rudolph? Chris, Ruder, Chris, Chris Rudolph? I have the feeling it was someone else, actually. It wasn't no, no, Chris no. A hundred percent it was Chris Rudolph and Jason okay. Kuhn. I remember. Okay. Yeah. It was I'm really confused funny. with the other guy. But yeah. I like this bad blood. It makes uh, it makes the poker more fun, you know, like people getting mm -hmm. a little crazy. Peter Batsikowski flop stop pair with his ace nine offsuit. That's one of the better boards you're going to find when you open things up with ace nine. Pablo Silva has absolutely nothing to work with, and he will just let it go. You know, this weekend, Nanonoko, there is a big fight in MMA, but you're not into it at all, right? Not even one I'm bit. Not, not, I've never watched a match in my life. I have no idea who's going to fight. Uh, is it like, God, I'm trying to think, who, who, uh, that McGreg McGregor, is he fighting? I don't know. I don't, it's only a UFC <laughs> fighter I know. You almost called him a cracker. <laughs> it's like, what is, <laughs> the, where, what is this, Nanonoka? I don't know if we can really go with that. 
No, it's not McGregor. It's the heavyweight title that's on the line. It's uh, Francis Ngannou versus Cyril Gunn. They I are. have no idea. Uh, they're no. absolute monsters, both of them. It's going to be really good. Yeah. I'm like the only poker player that has n- no knowledge of UFC out there. <laughs> I'm not even a poker player anymore. I'm a, I'm a sidekick to Roddy, the pocket fours man. That's what I've fallen down to just bad you're my days. you're my hype man <laughs> i'm the hype man i do get pretty hype when you talk about pocket fours i won't lie i think i do an okay job <laughs> check six yeah now i'm just thinking of that other hand but you're like in a sentence you're like never mind if pocket four speak it's like <laughs> mate there's a stand a screen queen nine like i don't think i need to talk about pocket fours here <laughs> Nikita will check as he has completely missed haxton is going to bet his mid pair one big blind Nikita kind of bleeding a little bit, it seems, right? 2.8 million. I wonder what happened. He, he's got like a good backdoor hand, you see? So I think, I feel like he's thinking, maybe I bluff raise this. Yeah, that's not the vibe I was getting. When you see those back doors, you can't unsee them. You need some frequencies. The raise is so small, I believe the four will call and see what yeah, happens. Exactly. You have position. That was like the best card ever for the backdoor draw. Are you kidding me? I was thinking, I was like, all right, well, what are we hoping for then? The, the five of spades. And somehow the five of spades rolls up. So Mikita yeah. goes from absolutely nothing to a jack high flush draw and an open ended straight draw. This is ridiculous. What a Axiom, card. I don't think he can call this. The five of spades is a terrible card to roll off. Lose to the straight draws now. Lose to a hand that's already made, flush draws. Like, what, what do you do here? Uh, yes, it's third pot, but that's yeah, got a full nice play. Unreal, though, that the five of space rolls yeah. off. Like, you're talking about back doors, and bam, the one card that makes all the back doors a super real draw rolls off. Insane. Like, too good of a back door. Because you're thinking, oh, maybe a five, maybe a spade, <laughs> maybe a jack, but then, like, the perfect back door card in the deck. Yeah. All right, well, maybe that's the turning point for Mikita as he wins the next one too. And he wakes up with Ace King. And Isaac Hexen has Queen 10 offsuit on the button, but we're playing four handed, you know, so we could absolutely make a play with Queen 10 or fight back. Too Hexen solid. Too, too solid, too good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> too like big he, of a brain. No, nah, he does. The 10 offsuit, the, the decent 10 offsuit hands, he's, he doesn't get trapped by those hands. Wow, look at Mikita though. 2.8 million. Barely anything happened. Made a little check raise with a back door, and now he's up to 3.7. Roddy, I'm surprised you haven't mentioned that I haven't mentioned the 50,000, 100,000 level. That's weird. <laughs> this is what we became, we mate. You're surprised that I'm surprised. All right, great commentary over here. Top two wow. pair for Haxton with 8 4 suited. Top, top. Top, 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 I guess. Yeah. Jamie Gold. Top, top. <laughs> yeah. That's like the most iconic like things he's ever said. It looks like he's thinking about a lead, isn't he? Wow, that's very weird. Lead. He's trying to mix things up, try to confuse his opponents. Axon mm-hmm. often does that. Re- probably regrets it now. <laughs> yeah, he's like, damn it. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> why he let, did that. Shouldn't let this guy see that. We've got a suited king four versus pocket eights in the big blind. I just wonder what Andres is going to make it. You think he makes it like 4x? Like when he gets limped? I have no idea how to read Andreas. No idea. 4x. Seems like an Andres move. King 4 suited probably was still called though. Just because suited King blind versus blind. Expecting this guy to raise way, like just garbage, you know? Like, but just flop nothing. All good. Good flop for pocket eights, of course. Jack 6-6. Six, six. Sure, yeah. the Jack's annoying, but. He's one of the better boards you're going to find. Yep, paired board. Usually paired board, you size down. 25, 33% makes a lot of sense. Hand is vulnerable. Quarter pot it is. Easy. Well done. Easy game it is. I mean, he is really having a phenomenal easy night, right? He's just like kind of doing his thing. Doesn't make yeah. life too hard on himself, except for when he's in the small blind. And Pablo Silva's in the big blind. That's where we get a little wild. Are we going to make it 450k again, mate? No, he just limps this time around. Cool. I think it's because he's seen the three bet from Pablo three times now, right? Since he's 4x, so he's like, all right, I think I'm a little bit done with this strat check. S hand. I wouldn't mind if he denied some equity, but it looks like he's going to check call if a bet does come out. I don't think Pablo should be betting, though. 
too often the chip leader will just bet the flop if he didn't have anything. So it seems like when he checks this flop, he's got something to call. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a tiny pot. Andreas has all the chippies. He doesn't need, need to make life yeah. too hard on himself at this point. I think time to den deny some equity, throw a bet out there. I like this a lot. Pablo, I was trying to find a way to play a hand, thinking about this one. Is he really going to go for it? Check back flop, <laughs> queen deuce, play, make a play on the turn. I don't know. Oh, wow. He actually calls. This guy is just a non-believer. Queen deuce high. All right. New meta. Did you see that uh, story of Patrick Leonard where Which he, he was doing really well at one point. He posted a lot. It was one of his flying days. <laughs> he has pocket sevens and let's say that the board is i don't know like king king 10 10 5 mm -hmm. and his opponent makes a little bet on the river and he's like i've got this i've got this win high man i just have the feeling that i'm good i'm really gonna call off here with seven high because he got counterfeited he's like i just feel like i'm getting counterfeited i, I feel like this guy has pocket fours or pocket fives or anything and I feel like he's just making a little bet. I'm, I'm about to call off at seven high. And I'm like looking at this story and I'm like, that how many hands have we played today, mate? We're calling off with seven highs. Pablo Silva raises it up here on the river uh, with Queen Deuce. I mean, missed really up, weird. I guess. Andreas will just call and hope that yeah, his hand is good. Why not? Yeah, really weird line. Check, check, flop, bet, call, bet, raise. I mean, it's an eight or nothing. Did the eight yeah. really check back the flop, though? I'm thinking very unlikely. I'll be putting Pablo on like 10 8 or nothing. That's, that's the only hand I can really make a lot of sense the way the hand's been played. Yeah. The thing is, it could also just trying to get you off a chop, right? Where he also has a very random weak ace or something. I don't know. I, I, I don't see any reason for Andreas to fold here, actually. He's like, sure, if you have an eight, you have an eight, right? Like, take it. You got me. But I think you just always call here. It's seven big blinds. Even if you're wrong, you have 72 big blinds behind. Against kind of the crazy guy at the table, right? Like the, yeah. Uh, it's not, it doesn't feel good. So I don't fault him for taking time. But is he going to out-level himself, I guess, is the question. It, it may not feel good. It, it may be a bit weird. And it might be It's like, oh, this is kind of annoying. But I don't think I'd ever fault. I just don't fault here. Yeah, it's kind of one of those. Pay if the man have, his money, right? Yeah. Show me. Like if you have 30 big blinds, then it becomes a completely different scenario. But here I would honestly not even care. I'd be like, well, it's either I have 96 or I've got 72 big blinds, you know? This is I'd not also what makes a break. We'll think about the history here because Pablo and them have been fighting so hard that just more random factor comes up a little bit more in this dynamic, right? Like if the guy's been playing super tight, like sure. I can kind of I can see it folding. Oh wow, he does fold though. Wow. Andreas Six. leveling himself there a little bit. Let's go of the ace on the river versus the queen high bluff. I mean, sick hand by Pablo Silva, but yeah, I feel like he just stole it. there. I honestly uh, I'm a bit surprised about that one. Good timing on your story too. I completely forgot the story. What what were we talking about? It was uh, Pat it was getting Patrick good. Leonard. <laughs> Patrick Leonard calling off with seven oh, high seven. on the river. He's like, I just know this guy got counterfeited too. And then he called in the story and he's like, I was wrong, by the way, guys. I think I'm on a little bit of a uh, win tilt. I've been winning too much and I'm seeing things that are not there. And I'm like laying in bed because I'm all watching them at like 5 a.m. I'm like, Pats, we're calling off river beds now with seven high. Like the sevens got counterfeited. I was like, this is oddly specific. And I mean, sure. One in 150 times, I guess you're going to be right. But I was laughing at that one. I was like, Patrick is <laughs> yeah. so funny, man. Yeah, he's like super hype in his stories too, which is really funny. Mm -hmm. It would have been even funnier if had he called and the guy showed up with pocket eights counterfeit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the bluff that still owned him. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's funny. Uh, All righty. So defend Jack Six. Check, check. Well, if he didn't stab now, I guess he's, he's not looking to stab. Let's check check again. Kita probably believes that his nines are good here. I mean, that was a very big hand, by the way, for Pablo Silva. Because if he's wrong, he goes down to 2 million, right? And we actually do have a clear short stack. 
No, instead, he's just kind of still hanging in there together with Mikita, who did ship all the way up to 4 million now. Crazy. Crazy end and crazy that it worked. I think uh, all the craziness this time working against Andreas. And I feel like he's the one who started making it crazy with his big openings from the small blind. I think Andreas also thinking like, um, this guy can't be trying to, like, he, he's got to have it eventually, you know? Like, And he's probably thinking like, is anyone crazy enough to bluff here? Mm -hmm. And it is kind of a crazy bluff when you think about it, right? The guy is repping the, sending the ace really hard. You'd have to really think he would fold that in that spot after checking through the flop of pretty deep stacks. A lot of times someone would bet an eight on the flop too. Like it's just insane. Uh, check, check on the flop, right? Yep. So let's see what happens. Jack eight bets big, almost a pot size bet. This is a solid 80% of the pot or even more. Haxton improves to top two pair. He's wondering, what are you trying to tell me, mate? You're going to tell me you have four or five? Or what is happening here? Just makes the call. River is a 10. Andreas completely misses. He does have the eight. Could obviously now pretend that the eight, nine got there, but this uh, yeah. is getting a bit out of hand. The wheels are uh, coming off. Yeah. If he's betting again, he's trying to move his opponent off like two diamonds or like a pocket pair lower than ace when this is going to get snapped off. Wow. Haxton to the top. I mean, it is a big bet. It's 11 big blinds on the river, but Haxton is still sitting on two pair. And like Haxton probably just looks at it like, all right, mate, if you got it, you got it, right? Like, I can't do anything. I've got aces up. I'm just going to call and we'll see what happens. And yeah, he's just good. And Andreas in a spot where he should have been at 95 big blinds is now suddenly at 60. So needs to make sure that he keeps it together. Tell you, man, Haxton's like just the most solid guy out there. Eight point, you can never, you can never go wrong putting money down on Isaac Haxton. Wow, 8.3. Yeah, Andrews, I feel like a little bit of wheels coming off right now. Just uh, what's been happening recently. He felt mm -hmm. like he made the wrong play with the ace. A7, now he makes a bluff, doesn't work. Yeah. Now I mean, he needs to rebet. Yep. Jack 8 open is getting punished by the ace does offset. I mean, he's going to be molding even more if he, <laughs> he sees it back in 20 minutes from here on out. He's like, oh my God, I folded when I had all the chips in the world to a queen high bluff. He's going to open the ace 5 here to solve a special under the gun. Axon has 10 6. Axon may just call. You would say that the hand is connected, right? 10 6. Is it connected? Yeah, it's connected for sure. What do you mean? You can make a straight. Have you never <laughs> made a straight with 10 6? Never. Yeah, probably true. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sure I did in five card PLO, but they've never been good. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Whenever you need a top end and a bottom end card for any PLO straight, Especially in five card, just know your beat. Like I, yeah. I have paid, I paid off time and time again, you know, and they've never been good. Yeah, it's always like it's like the most, I guess, reverse implied on hands in the world, right? Like you always get overstrated, like every yeah. single time. A hundred percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> the only time you have a win is if they turn pocket nines into a blow or something. Like that's the only time yeah. uh, that you have a win. All right, so what happened here in the end? The ace five is good. Yeah, so at least Andreas yeah, picks up a couple big blinds and he's back to six million. I look forward so, to playing PLO with Anatoly because I'm pretty sure he's going to bet a 10 6 straight if he has one. I'll be like, oh, my sweet summer child. Those don't work here, mate. <laughs> Can you please um, use some of your gifts during your little stream? Of course. Battle? All of them. Yeah. yeah. All right. I actually did check. Um, I was like trying to see if I can find any gifts of myself. And I'm sure that there are some gifts of myself in the GIF database. But the problem is that Rotterdam obviously doesn't really work. Because I don't yeah, know if you know you this. See a, a city yeah. just pops up. <laughs> yeah, or like fire or like football related. And if you just type in StarCraft, then you get all the generic StarCraft things. And if you type in Roddy, you get a bunch of Indian dishes served to you. So, Roddy? <laughs> yeah, I, I just have a terrible name, but I'm sure there is a gift of me out there somewhere. Maybe I can spam you, one or two of myself. Can, can you try Doodles next time and tell me if one actually pops up for you? Oh, I forgot. I mean, I could do it. No, I can do it. Do it later. Yeah, I will do it for later. Re I actually Report only to me next week because we don't talk during the week. I, I noticed. 
<laughs> As Isaac Hexton takes another one down, let's see if we have an interesting hand. I have a not really a funny story, but all right. So Mikita cool. will probably end up winning this hand. So Good on time. the Saturday evening, this is kind of a story combined with a promo. On Saturday evening, we still have the what used to be called the Beat the Pros. It moved from Sunday, it was a 215. It's now a 105 or a 110 tournament played on the Saturday evening, starts at 6 p.m. Uh, Central European time or 7. So let's say 1 a.m. on the East Coast. If you guys knock any of us out, I think you get a bonus and you get uh, seated into a tournament where you can win free money. And they often ask me to play it. So I'm like, sure. So if somebody knocks me out, they get a bonus. And I, I had a terrible day. I was betting on uh, some sports and I like betting on, wow, Hexen, Thrills the King. I like betting on the over. My motto in life is that life is too short to ever bet the under. So I always hope for goals. There were no goals. I was already molding. I was like, whatever. I'll, I'll play the little 105 uh, Beat the Pros mini edition. <laughs> And I'll see if we can run it up in poker. First hand, I'm small blind. I, I, don't know, I bet I win. Get two blinds extra. Second hand, some guy opens on the gun 2.1. Crazy guy from Hong Kong. They're always crazy from Hong Kong. Makes it like 7.1 big blinds. I've got 125. I make it like 22 big blinds with queens. Under the gun, raise a false. Hong Kong guy <laughs> just looks at me. Snap all in 125 bigs. So I was like, all right, I'll call. He has ace queen offsuit. I was like, I know what's going to come. But then the flop is good. I was like, ah, maybe it's just points that bad. And poker is okay. Turn, bam, ace of diamonds. I'm just sitting there in my living room. I was playing on my phone. I'm like, what is happening today? No one can score a goal. Second end of the tournament. I'm getting three out of it. I was so pissed. I was like, I'm done with the beat the pros. <laughs> Yeah, no. Oh, beat the pro, so he gets a bounty. So I don't really. Yeah, yeah, he gets a bounty. Get yeah. Well, yeah. 125 big blinds with ace queen offsuit, and it's not a rebuy tournament. You can't rebuy. That seems questionable to me. But... Yeah, um, I do have one question for you. It had me a little bit stumped, um, but let me see. Anything here? No. So. I know what over on. I kind of know what over under is, but I don't really understand the reference when you were saying it in the sport. You were talking about goals or something. What is it? Yeah, what, I don't. I just don't know. Okay, very simple. Let's say there is a football game tonight. Let's say it's an international game. It's Australia versus Korea. The over under will probably always be put at two point five. So I like betting the over, which means I win if the game has at least three goals. So two one Australia, three uh zero -huh. Australia, three one. If they score four, five, six, seven, doesn't matter. You win, uh, but. Yeah, if you bet a lot of games and all of them end in 1-1 one, one or 0-0 zero, zero or 0-1, oh, and then it's just a disastrous day. So, but, it ha but you also have to choose the correct team. Is that right? No, 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 no. It doesn't matter oh. who scores. So you're just betting matter. on the number of goals in the game. Exactly. I bet uh -huh. on the over. So you're like an action junkie. You're like, ah, oh, score. Exactly. Like, I never bet the under. Like, only, uh, no. Like, maybe one out of 100 bets, I would bet the under. And is but this I, a common bet to just bet on how many scores? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very. Uh, people love betting on goals. I thought people bet on the team. No? Is that not yeah, a thing? You, absolutely. You can bet on who wins. But the problem is that, uh, I mean, there's not a problem with it. If you feel good about it, you can just bet on the winning team. You can also bet on handicap. Say that a team wins with a goal difference of at least 1.5. So if they win 2-0, your bet wins. If they win 3-0, 4-0. So, Roddy... But what I understand is the over under is kind of like betting on black or red on roulette, where it's like split even both sides. I, I mean, sure, to some, yeah, obviously it's supposed to be set in the center. It is kind of a 50 50 bet, but it's obviously not, you know, that straightforward. Like and less variance than picking a team, I guess, is a better way to say it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, because right. obviously if you bet on football, there's three options win, lose, draw. Over under, it is only two, right? It's either over yeah, under. Yeah. All right. Cool. Because half the goals don't exist in football. In case you do, don't you know. think I'm gonna start watching some soccer now? I don't think so. Football, whatever. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I have both works, right? There is American football too. Wow. <laughs> Trip eight, by the way, for Andreas here. Yes. Back to action. Yeah, we actually have a decent pot here. Pablo Silva shouldn't lose a whole lot here, but let's see what happens. I like the lead. Oh um especially with the dynamic like i think pablo would call any ace and just lose like way more chips because uh pablo would check any ace i think on that turn card. so have you never done any sports betting in your entire life i'm not really a dj in sports bet or just better that much really yeah no i don't really follow sports besides okay. poker 
Uh, did you ever have a night in a casino where you play house games or you don't do that either? No, I played that like I played that like way, way in the beginning when I didn't understand stuff. But uh, no, I don't No, I'm, I'm not much of a DJ guy, to be honest. Would, would you expect that from me? <laughs> I, I love how you can say that you're not much of a DJ guy. As Mikita Biotskowski, by the way, just sends it with Ace Four of Clubs, gets the fold out of Andreas. I love how you can say that while you're spending. I don't know. I don't know how much, and I really don't want to know how much on guys that are puking rainbows out of their face. Like we're talking five, six digits. I don't know how crazy you are. And you're like owning all these little digital arts. They're puking rainbows. They look like my nephew of three years old, drew them. You're spending tens and thousands of dollars. You're like, it's not that really much true. of a digit. Sure, you're, you're, you're exactly right, actually. Like, yeah, I'm pretty digit on that stuff. And my <laughs> my wife just like kind of gives me crap for it a little bit. Like, wow, like you're just spending like I don't even I don't play 25 Ks out of my own pocket like tournaments because I just find it too much variance. But like the variance obviously and stuff, that stuff is, is crazier. I don't know. But you know what it is? They're so freaking smart because everything is denoted in Ethereum. So sometimes you're just like, oh, it's just two. It's just one. <laughs> and it looks so cheap, especially if you got a little of a roll, right? You're like, oh, I'm just spending like 0.8. It's nothing. And it's like yeah. so much money when you really think about it. Yep. Yeah, no. Uh, it's like if in the grand scheme of things, spending 100 bucks on the over or the under is maybe less degen than spending 10K on a guy puking a rainbow out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but what do I know? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. No. All right. Haxton is going to three bet with Ace King offset. Pablo Silva has Ace Nine. This would be the wrong moment for Pablo Silva to feel that Haxton is making a move on him. And he's like, you know what? I'll just send it. it would be poor he's, timing. He's like super suspicious, but he's probably thinking, this guy has Haxton's been real quiet against me. He's like the one guy I'm not fighting against at this mm -hmm. table. Yeah. He's like, that's just poker. Against Haxton is just poker. Against everyone else, it's clearly a whole lot more. But <laughs> yeah, Haxton no. is running away with it, though. 9.2 million at this point. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really know how he has 9 million chips. He's just like the most solid guy. He just he just chills, solid, wins some hands here. And then I mean, all of the, a gets... the A7 hand was big. Obviously, yeah. he won a lot of big hands before, but the A7 one, that's really what kind of separated him from the rest of the pack. I feel like every final table, he just casually chips up like 1.5 million, adds to his stack, and just chills and just always cruising. Yeah. Like well, tonight has been smooth low, sailing, man. Like, has yeah, Haxton ever variance. gone down in chips? Has he gone down at one point where it's like, oh, he's been losing chips for 20 minutes? Nah, he's you know, he's not, and he doesn't raise every hand like some of these other chip leaders out there, right? So, he's not mm -hmm. like he doesn't look like he's trying to bully you around. That's what's so cool about him, too. Yeah, and then you're like, yeah. oh, it's Isaac Haxton. I can trust Isaac Haxton, he's not making a move on me. <laughs> and the funny Haxton, thing is. Is uh when you say that is every time though they think he's making a move with him on him and he's like getting this value from the craziest hands, like I don't know. Perfect player. Literally. Checks back the seven high flush. We'll probably call off if Mikita decides to take a stab at it. Mm -hmm. Mikita does uh, still have a pair, but I don't can we really call this showdown value? Is this showdown value? Has showdown, but I don't fault him for bluffing. Uh, Ace would have a trouble calling Queen without a spade, but he's going to try to beat like those pocket eights and nines, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, should go check, check. Can't imagine Haxton betting this. This was... Oh, he's got a spade. Sorry, I thought for some reason he just had naked Ace. No, he no. could. I, but he should value. Uh, I don't know if should is the right word, but he can because a king will 100% pay off. Yeah. I feel like that is what he's hoping for. That's not what it is. Now, this does, of course, open the door for some check raises, but most people Nikita, don't. Nikita doesn't really have a hand where he could check raise. Eh? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, don't fault this, of course. Yeah, good play. Almost almost 10 milli for Haxton. The man is flying. What were the odds for Haxton? 10.4 to 1, correct? Let's take a look here. Um... Plus 940. What is that? Yeah, 10.4 to 1. Yep. And ooh, Ace King, Ace Queen, mate. Ace King. And the ooh, two guys ooh. that have been going at it all <laughs> night long snap all in from Andreas. Pablo makes the call. 
and could be a very big hand ace king ace queen well it is a very big hand could be the final hand for pablo silva as he gets unlucky tables are turned now <laughs> andreas nosman is the one who needs the king he does not get the king and ace king doubles up 5.5 million for pablo uh oh wow should have ended him with that uh call of the a7 earlier like really now he those chips have been leveraged into double now like sick mm -hmm. short stack Green jack of uh, clubs completely misses the flop and somehow nine six offsuit flops best. All right, so okay, check call. Interesting. Should go check check. Um, Pablo Silva is plus three seven one. Okay, and then Andres is plus three seven five. So they're like the same odds. Pablo and uh, Andres Nemeth. Makita plus two seven seven. That's what the sheet says. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's different odds, right? That's the American system. Yeah, I like it's yours like, better. Yeah, no, the, the European one is way easy. The American one is sort of all right, because you know, like, okay, I, if I bet 100 bucks, that's my profit. Uh, it's not rocket science. It's just a bit weird. It's like, why are we assuming that we're betting 100 bucks? What if we're betting 80 or 120? Yeah. But it, it still is pretty easy to understand. The British one, like, I've been sports betting my entire life almost, but... What they do in the UK, I find so complicated. I get it sometimes, but you see really weird ones where it's like 11 8, 13 like 5. I was like, what? So it's a ratio. Yeah, it's, yeah, but it's really weird, man. It's actually so hard to understand what the odds are. That's what it's supposed to show. Uh, I have yeah. no idea why anyone would use that. Yeah. No, you're 100%. I think. Uh, right? Just the decimal one is by far and away the easiest. For the people that don't know, for instance, if you would have bet on Mikita Batsikowski tonight, it says Euro 3.6. It just means if you bet 10 Euro, you know, times 3.6, you get 36 Euro, so 26 Euro profit. That's pretty simple. In American, that would be plus 260, right? So it's like you bet 100. If you bet 100 bucks, you get 260 extra, so 360 total. That makes sense. I don't know how they would show it in the UK odds, but something really weird. Oh, it's like 13 dash five. Yeah, it's, it's written there too. Like 13 dash five. That's so weird. Now, even the American would be tricky when you go like $70 bet. Then you get confused. Like, All right, so I got to do some division, some multiplication yeah. or something. That's when it gets tricky. No, but for instance, the odds for Maslek, according to the UK system, is like 77 dash 10. Like, what does that mean? Literally, no one knows what it means. Like, what system are they using there? It's so yeah. weird. Isaac Hexen, 47-5. It's like, I guess it's like times eight or something. It was like so, so complicated. Let's see. Limp, maybe, no, sorry, maybe jam, but it was like less than almost 30 big. So I guess call is okay too. Hexen trying to put that pressure on. Absolutely nothing. Kind of a board that might hit a limp call too. We'll see what he does. Hexen just doesn't make too many mistakes. Mikita still has the best hand, but this is obviously not a boy that he's in love with. This, yeah, this is where you hope for a deuce on the river and just hope your ace nine is good. Yeah, he would love it if he sees one more check. Though. That means they probably going ace high. It's like compare ace highs. So it is one more oh. check. Nice river. I would check one more time. Uh, probably. Unless you're going to block that. Uh, maybe it doesn't make sense logically for you to bet the ace i guess mm -hmm. it's supposed to represent the other guy and you can also make life so hard on yourself if you bet there and then you get raised it's like i think checking is easy and if your opponent does better bit you just call and it's like all right simple game plan let's see what hollywood does here nine four offsuit pure garbage but he's got the chips the other mm -hmm. guy's got a shorter stack Went for a race. you know what i'm uh I'm thinking of as well, you said like the whole top, top thing of Jamie Gold is like one of the most memorable things for you. There was this other guy a few years ago, and I know that you know his name, but I actually can't figure it out right now. But he was always saying like, how many miles from, from here to Hollywood? How many miles is it? You know, and he was just oh. chatting all the time and he was super like entertaining and obnoxious at the same time. I think you know what I'm talking about. Nah, kind of well, I don't watch the World Series, so I'm not sure, uh, but that sounds like a really annoying dude. So yeah. I, I think if I is say his pro? name, you know him. Say pro again? or not pro? Is he a pro or not? I, I pro? think he kind of pro after. I think he turned pro after that because he had a really big uh, run, or maybe he was already a semi-pro. One sec. 
How many miles from here to Hollywood? I'm just trying to think of the most annoying player I can think of, and I'm thinking like William Kasuf. It's not that guy, I assume. Yeah, I think it actually is him. I think it's okay. him. Okay. I've heard he's real annoying. No offense if he's watching, but he's probably not. I, I think it's him. And he was talking uh, yeah, like yeah, in yeah, every yeah, day. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's him. From how many I, how many miles from here to Hollywood? So when you say Hollywood, I'm like thinking of that. He did that so many times when he was playing in the World Series. So whether you had it or not. Yeah, it's well. Yeah, he was. The thing is, I've never. The, how did I get it right despite never watching it, <laughs> never seen the clip? I don't even know that much about him. I just heard he was the most obnoxious pro out there ever, and like people just hated him, whether they're a pro or a recreational player. Like he turned off everybody, even the floor man. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, he got a couple of penalties, and I also think there was some drama around him later on. But let's go back to the action as Pablo Silva has ace jack, and I believe he check called there as Isaac Hexen has king three. I don't really see a way for Hexen to win unless he randomly binks a king on the river. Yeah. Um, took a shot on the flop. Kind of went getting nasty on the turn because you're not sure if your opponent's holding a big hand or if he's holding one of those combo draws. Going to go for one more bet. You know, when you bet this small on the turn, I almost think you like you got to fire the river because uh, what happens is eight nines are going to call, ten nines, like these weaker hands. Of course, ace jack's going to continue along. Um, it seems like Haxon's kind of setting up a play with this sizing. It's not going to work unless a nine rolls off or like a queen seven. Then maybe you can get some ace jacks to fold sometime. We'll see. Pablo thinking about raising actually. I don't. I know he's mm. not thinking about folding. No. Just seems, yeah, it's no. interesting because you might be blowing up the pot for no reason when you raise. So he is going to go for it. I'd love to see the snap fold now. A lot of chips heading Pablo's way. He's all the way back to six million. And don't oh needs to get a he got aces, but I feel oh, like I haven't seen aces in forever. I know first time I think tonight. I guess we're yeah. gonna limp the aces. No, Hexen had aces and he got a walk on his big line. I like raising this spot because the don't uh Makita doesn't have incentive to raise bluff when you limp, that's all. So get the value straight up. Got the couple mm -hmm. extra big blinds. Not a, the thing is, uh, Mikita actually has a decent hand, right? Mikita probably thinks that more often than not, he has a better hand than the small blind. We know that's not the case, but it's just a really bad board for Mikita. So, it, unless I, is... it wouldn't fall to me if he calls to kind of see what develops, but yeah, he does fold. Um, yeah, it's okay. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, both ways is okay. I mean, that could have been real bad news for Mikita. Imagine if the, the board is like Queen Seven Deuce or something, you know, and he's not yeah. going to go anywhere. Be dead, yeah. especially to De Pablo, who's I think he's kind of on everyone's radar right now. <laughs> King six suited makes the call. Both players flop a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. This board heavily favors Makita. I would love to see Makita actually consider putting multiple barrels here. The reason I say that's the stack sizes. Uh, Isaac should be re-jamming like ace queen ace 10 all these big cards so if he calls the flop he often has like a jack 10 queen like a weak hand so this mm -hmm. should be multi-barrel for sure well and this helps right if you were not quite yeah. sure if you want to go multi-barrel Mikita picks up the flush draw on the turn and it doesn't really matter that he still has jack high this is a perfect mm -hmm. card for him to this fire again and Axon, yeah he went from having four clean outs to the nuts to now only three. And, and there is even a chance that they chop. And if the king of, or if the jack of diamonds would have rolled off, which is not possible, but imagine if it would have, then you have that problem. So Hexen, let's go over it. Well done for Mikita. This is the second time that Mikita turns the world. Maybe this one was not as good as the five of spades, but right. yeah, they've been good to him. Hollywood, Haxton. How many miles to Hollywood? It's so annoying, man. It's so annoying, actually. Was it really uh, that bad? Yeah, oh, so, oh he did so, it. So I bet you times. he said, did he say like multiple times in one hand? That's what I'm going to guess, too. Like, why is he saying it? <laughs> I don't know. Like, why? I don't know. They're in Vegas. They're not in, they're not in Los Angeles. It makes no sense. No, I mean, and that's why I guess this conversation, they're somewhat close. How many miles is it from here to Hollywood? Maybe like 300, 400? How many miles? I mean, relevant. <laughs> not like, yeah. yeah. Maybe there's a funny joke. Someone just, it's not funny. Just no, that, that was no joke. That was just it. It's just talking about people pretending and Hollywooding and acting. Yeah. Uh, it's 
Bad. All right, ten eight versus six seven. Pablo Silva flops a bottom pair. Mm. Mm. Okay, right. nice float. Ten eight. <laughs> yeah, wow. I mean, <laughs> it's been oh well. <laughs> take that, mate. Take that. Rivers the ten. Let's check, check again. This is one of these hands that if I was Pablo Silva, I'd be low key tilted about. That's like, hey. but this is where I take off the helmet and put you yeah. suck and put back on the helmet. <laughs> uh oh. We have Ace Jack and Ace Nine as suited. Andreas has an ice cube. Everyone always wants to get rid of the ice cube. Probably thinks that Ace Nine is good here against Hexton is opening. He just calls, though, doesn't blow up the pot. Yeah. Um... Just spot where he might even continue to a little tiny C bet. Maybe best hand, maybe backdoor heart. I, I could see him potentially calling. Chip leader has incentive to see to raise. Yeah. I think ace nine. Oh, but big bet, I probably I just lay it down. Mm -hmm. It's okay. 50% pot there for Isaac Hexton. He is on his way back. He was at 10 million though for a bit. So Hexton is uh on a tiny bit of a downswing. It's the first time he actually went down in chips. And he's already winning them back. We have four minutes left until the second break of the evening. So it's already a much longer show than it was last week. Yeah. But this is obviously pretty average to have four players left. Four minutes. But they are playing very quick. And we did get shorthanded relatively quick. Which means that the blinds are already a bit high for this phase in the tournament. And it will keep going up because obviously showing a lot of uh, pre-flop aggression. And if you guys are new to this show or to GG Poker, the blinds go up based on the amount of hands they play. At the final table, King Jack. Wow. Power play. Gets it done, though. Well done, Andreas. Risky. I like it. Um, yeah, no. I mean, look, if it's going to slow down, I like I this four action. This forehand is way more fun to watch than like a seven handed guy's waiting for the short sec to bust and folding. Mm -hmm. You know, like this is. This is why we came to watch the Super Millions, you know? Yep. Four absolute beasts going at it. And they've all had their moments so far. But it's mostly been Isaac Haxon who just had the chillest of times. Pablo was on the verge of falling off a cliff with his queen high bluff. But that one worked. And now he's kind of back on top of the mountain. Makita has just been stuck in this 2.8 to 4 million chip re uh, region eh, for the longest time. Yep. I'm uh, going to start with a call. Contain the pot. Should go check, check. Or does Hexton see something we don't see? Let's make a pair on the river. It's reasonable for Makita to throw out like a little third pot bet, trying to get some value from a worse hand. A king would most certainly bet the turn. An ace five suited? Yeah, something like this. Ace five he offsuit? Should. He can represent some bluffs, queen jack, jack nine. Uh, it's possible. I like this. Okay, yeah, slightly bigger sizing even. I don't know if Hexen, Hexen will pay off relatively quick even. I almost just felt that Hexen has a, too, too many tri a chip syndrome where he's like, ah, oh, can't even be bothered to properly analyze this hand. You know, let's just see what you got. Got a six on the river. I'll pay off. Well done for Mikita. So he's back up to four million. And that obviously still gives him a fighter's chance tonight. Pump it up. All in. Oh, actually, snap called. Wow, he played that so fast. Um, kind of weird. <laughs> like he jumped yeah. King Jack suited and he's like, all right, just call King Queen and blind versus blind. It's all good. Maxon will check. Maybe a little bit intimidated by that super quick call. It's like, you just have a suited ace or something. It yeah. goes check, check. That makes this an interesting hand, huh? Should be a delay C bet from Jack 9. If you don't start betting now, it's hard to represent the ace. Three hundred k, 33%. I was thinking of 333k, but this is close enough. King nice Queen call. makes the call, though. And if Haxton gives up here, Andreas wins a big pot with just King Queen. King High. Tough bet oh, to make. Wow. Sick, nice play. Sick. Really great call, man, by Andreas on the turn. Actually, very, very well done. Excellent. 
think we have one more hand before our second break. It's been a ton of fun. I know we got a little bit distracted talking about sports betting and NFTs and all these other things, but it's been a lot of fun watching these four go at it. And all four of them still in it. Even Makita back up to 4 million. It's like almost more even now than it was a while ago. So <laughs> this is just great. Yeah. Eight, seven off suit. Out. All right. I think, I think that's it. That, I do think that is it. Yep. That is going to do it for the second hour. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it. We are having a lot of fun as always. We are here each and every single Tuesday evening. We'll take a little four minute break. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And we'll see you guys soon. Hi, I'm the new Daniel Negreanu. And I'm the old Daniel Negreanu. We both represent online poker sites. We both love Hold'em. I mean, we're basically the same person. Absolutely, man. I used to love watching you play, the way you would read people, call out their hands, and then, of course, call anyway. Oh, stop. I'm blushing. But old Daniel, man, I got to ask, man, what uh, what's up with this look you got going on here? You you tired or something? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of all these freaking beats I've been taking. It's freaking ridiculous. Look at this motherfucking hand. This motherfucker is calling the fucking turn with this piece of fucking hand. Fucking absurd. Whatever. I, I don't even know why I'm so upset. I mean, bad beats, they're just part of the game, right? I mean, they don't really have to be. You see that? I took a bad beat, then GG Care took care of some of my losses. Hashtag, thanks GG. You think uh, maybe I could borrow that laptop and play a little while? No, definitely not. Just say GG to that site you're playing on over there. You just think you're so clever. Nope, just a good read. GG, poker star. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my. Michael Otamo is the best.
Welcome back to the third hour of week 27, season two, where we are left with four awesome poker players. And these four have been going at it, swinging for the fences, very even stacks to some degree. All four of them still in it, two in it. Been a lot of fun tonight. Yep. You're muted. Uh, and I was just saying, yeah. I wouldn't say anything. Uh, here we go. See that? Jack High flush draw. So what Not do you what bad. do you expect the pace to be this hour? Are we we gonna lose anyone? We're gonna I think it's over hour. before the next break. All right, all right. Here we that's a big statement. Here we go. Blinds are pretty big though, and they will go up again in ten hands. So I actually think uh, we're gonna see blood. But I have no idea who goes out first. I have no idea who wins it. Like it's so even. I think against the, uh, with these four. Yep. Do you think? Who do you think will make heads up for sure though? Hacks, I 100%. But against who? Don't ask me. <laughs> That's the only prediction I'm willing to make that Haxton does not go out first. Obviously, he has the biggest stacks, but also he's Isaac Haxton. He's yeah. freaking solid. We still got our little side bet going on. You got Makita. I got Haxton. Oh, do you have any idea on the points? Maybe production can update us on the points. I know you're a bit further ahead now, but I'm still not sweating. If I'm still behind in week 45, then I'm sweating, but I won't be behind, so I'm not worried. So you're like, all right, who's on the bottom? Is it a known player? Let's go bet every single time on the bottom. <laughs> all right, let's see. Uh, at this point, I still feel like we're, we're just starting, mate. Like, it's, it's so early. It doesn't mean anything. And neither of us really had any, like, monster fails. Like, yeah, you pick a demo for 3.3. Like, congratulations, mate. Well done. <laughs> All right, I'm pretty sure you're gonna win the pocket fours and fives contest. Like, I, I don't Me think too. I'm ever gonna make a set for the rest of the contest. You might make a couple here and there, but fives is just it's not even a hand. Everyone that watches the show knows I'm gonna win that contest. I won that contest before the first episode was even played, mate. He, he schooled me, man. You hustled me so hard <laughs> on that one. That was so good. Alrighty, so Fine. value bet. Fine, yes, the value bets with that seven on the river. Andreas definitely back in it. He got rid of the ice cube back to 5.5 million. As he wakes up with ace queen, should take this one down too. Mm -hmm. Seven deuce game? Is that it? Mm -hmm. I actually feel like GG, you know how they're quite innovative? Yeah. I feel like they're going to introduce the seven deuce game sometime in the future i don't know if it's this year next year or 10 years a special from now, table but... just like one table in every limit where the seven deuce game is activated like yeah and like yeah. you show the seven deuce and it just auto takes like a couple big blinds and everyone stacks into like that'd be really cool i think it'll be really popular yeah. and really spices there, no the regs playing each other and also fun for recreational players too yeah 100 percent. i'm with you i don't see uh like just one table of all the regular tables that are out there and if you click on it and you get a little warning, this is a seven deuce game. If somebody wins their hand with seven deuce, they'll get a big light. Oh, oh, Haxton with king ten of diamonds. Mikita will snap call oh. with ace king offsuit. Haxton needs a ten or a lot of diamonds. And he gets the ten, but there are outs. There are still outs. Mikita needs an ace or a jack. He kind of deserves it. Come on, GG. An ace or a jack. It's not an ace or a jack. Haxton gets lucky here as he wins a monster pot. Nice. And Nikita Basikowski is out in fourth place. It is his best performance ever, but probably not exactly what he hoped for coming in as chip leader tonight. I mean, that's sad, man, because if he wins that uh, pot, he's basically the chip leader, right? Like, yeah, he, he would be the chip leader. He'd be the chip wow. leader, but yeah, wow. <laughs> well, Rowdy, your pick down in flames. Mine is looking good right now. Um, wow, that's brutal. I, I, I kind of remember... That Makita has kind of runs a little bad at our final tables, and to, that was just obviously the seal yeah. nail on the coffin. Wait, did you did you pick Haxton tonight? I picked Haxton, dude. I thought you I picked, picked Pablo. No, I picked Haxton. That's the production. Yeah, I believe you. I mean, yeah. yeah. The I think yeah, uh, Nananoka just that, that one. I shouldn't be winning this. Oh, I said yeah. I did. Yeah, sorry, there was a bit of lag. You froze for a split second, yeah. but I kind of got what you were saying. Wow, that's uh, that's brutal. Haxton getting lucky with the King Ten of Diamonds. Poor Mikita. I mean, he does still walk away with $205,000, so he's obviously not that poor, but yeah, you don't really wish that upon him. He played well tonight, did his best. <coughs> now it's Haxton, who is our dominant ship leader. 
It's gonna put these chips to use with a big open here with King Queen Ace Eight Defense though Nine Jack Five All Diamonds Monotone Board Million chips to fight for Will Hexton just keep betting He checks back Yeah uh -huh. Yeah I was just saying your guy should be chip leader And yeah. you should be potentially winning the bet Now you're in trouble <laughs> I'm, I'm aware, mate. <laughs> All right. Uh, yep. King, queen, no diamond. I don't think you can call this because obviously some of your outs is uh, this is bad outs. Mm -hmm. King of oh. wow, he does call, and another diamond rolls off, and neither of them has a diamond. This is fun. <laughs> this is a good one because it's if Pablo can bet, he'll win it. If he doesn't bet, he's 100% going to lose it. So it's actually on Pablo Silva to decide who wins this hand. He's first one, first choice. And he is in the tank. He's going wow. for it. Genius. Gangster play, man. Gangster play. He has the best hand, but he doesn't know that. Haxon doesn't. Haxon thinking about the little mint rays or something? Like, just like, wow. That'd be so sick. Actually, be so sick. No, he uh. lets it go. Wow, great hand by Pablo Silva. Even though he had the best hand all along, he probably feels that he just stole that one. Helmet's still on. He's in the zone. Uh, that's brutal. Now, I was saying also so unlucky for Makita just because like, I feel like he's been running so bad this uh, Super Millions. He deserves better. I mean, we knew he was going to get better than fifth. That was his best finish before, right? But like mm -hmm. fourth? Uh, it was almost a slap in the face. Yeah, especially if you come in as chip leader and then you go out with ace king against king 10. If it's ace king against pocket 10, you're like, okay, annoying, but whatever. Ace king yeah. against pocket king 10. Yeah. Gross. Both players have a flush draw on hex 10. Somehow, if you would have told me that hex 10 was going to win this spot on the flop, I would have laughed at you. I'd be like, no, that's, I'll go full Nanonoko. Actually, impossible. But, yeah, for sure. I think he's going to value about this. It's cold. <laughs> if I'm Andreas, I'm steaming now. <laughs> Check for of diamonds. King nine right. seven flop two hearts. Question: Think of super, all our super million winners or players. Like who would you say is the most solid, or top two or top? Who who comes to mind when I say most solid pro out there in our super millions? Axon must come up. Right. Yeah, and no, obviously he's one of them, but that would not be a fun answer. So I want to give a different answer. Who else? Otomar Ladva. He's not solid. That guy's crazy, man. No, he's, he's like a... <laughs> what? He's, he's good. So no, solid. I'm not saying he's not good. I'm just saying, like, who's just the most smooth sailing guy out there? You no, know, two other names come to mind for me. Uh, Haxton would be one of uh, the three guys. Would be Haxton, Lena Nine Hundred, yeah, and. Um, and Isaac Barron. Those three guys are just super solid. They're always smooth sailing, like cruising, like not too crazy. Make a move here and there. Like always seems to work. I have another one then for you, though. All right. Uh, Andras Nimeth. Like he's been freaking solid too whenever we see him. Why? Like, I think Andras he showed Nimeth up like one time solid. and won it. Oh, did he, he won twice now or once? Yeah, I, I think know. he won it in season one and season two. Season one, he's... he definitely didn't win it, I don't think. But I we think need him. Did. I think you liked him, though, right? Hungry, yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, I'm a bit of a fanboy, but I'm just going over the list of some of the previous ITM uh, finishes. But Anatoly, man, he's been freaking solid too. Let's be real, yeah, Anatoly he's, he's has good. been really good at our final tables. This pocket yeah. eights will take it down. Let's see if there's someone else, yeah. Solid is Isaac Hexton. Uh, I'll definitely give you that. Like, obviously, there's many standout players. Uh, also, I think to be honest, mate, Jirov Ganger, Bert Stevens, like he's been. Yeah, well, I mean, when I say solid, I also mean like not crazy. That guy is crazy, like the way he plays. Like, come on. Yeah, but you when does he, he ever go out first? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. If we're talking results, but I'm also talking play style too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. As a chip leader, he's crazy. Or when it's personal between a guy that's next to him that's raising him, then he's crazy. But if it's just <laughs> a standard setup, I actually feel Bert Stevens is super solid too. NCB, I think he comes up a lot too. Mm -hmm. Bruiser. All right, what do we got here? Raise, call. Wow, call of A7 heart high. Look at this board, it's just god awful. Call it the flop. Come on, overlay, go move back up. <laughs> the Don't forget, 100. you can. <laughs> the Daily 100, let's go. I, I love that you get an announcement for a 15 minute 
overlay for $68. I'm like, that's one buy-in in the next 15 minutes. I'm pretty sure that overlay will, will disappear. <laughs> but I'm glad that everyone that's online right now is aware of it. <laughs> yeah. You got you got to pitch them the seven deuce game. I think that'd be so so cool. Like just be game breaking. I mean, I'm sure they're listening. You still looking over the list? Yeah, I'm just going over some of our previous winners in uh, season two. Hey, you know why we don't see Zagos anymore? Uh, he hasn't been playing. No, he's been real ID mate. Oh, is he? What's what's the ID? David Zep. No, that's two different guys. S S C E P. No, we Zagos won the second edition of season two. I'm so sure about that, 100. percent Zagos no. won season two. So David Zep. I mean Zagos Zep. Sounds like a Hungarian. Oh no, wait, Zagos is actually. You're right. That's different. Yeah, no. Because so the reason I say that is I know I've seen David Zep at a found table, and I've seen Zagos at a found table. So I just thought we would have known by now. Yeah, no, same sorry, day. I'm an idiot. It was but look at this. Five that Zagos won. What the hell is this? 10 4. Isaac Haxton over bet 10 4 offsuit with just nothing. Like he's, his wheels are coming off. Solid is. He's like, I don't want to be the solid guy. I want to be the crazy <laughs> guy. Let me change that title. 2.6 million in the middle, and Haxton is playing 10 high. Perfect so, river if you're bluffing. Like with nothing. If you got one more chance, you represented that King 10. The queen is actually really tough to call down now. Do you think he maybe goes one more? Oh, he gives up. That's a big pot to give up on. I feel like most people would actually still bet there, right? Like even if it's just 25% pot and just, uh, it feels like it's almost too big to give up on, but maybe Hexen does not believe in that logic. Well, but then, you know, Silva, he's, he's the fighter. So sometimes you're like, is yeah. the guy I'm trying to bluff the guy who's like, by punishing, and I would say he is. I'm taking a look at some of the season one finishes, and there is this one guy that I still see a lot on uh, Pat's story as well, but we haven't seen him in our Super Millions in a long time. He is a Russian player called Maho, and then it's T underscore T at the end. I don't know if you're familiar with the name Maho T underscore T. He's been in the final. It looks like Mammoth. Is that what it looks like, right? Yeah, like his yeah, name. Like a, yeah, 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 Mammoth. That's... He's really okay. good. That guy actually is so. I think he's super good. If he's so he good, how be... come he hasn't shown up in season two? Huh? Explain. Uh, because I think he, in general, plays slightly lower buy-ins than 10 case. Like, he's more of a, you know, anything from 300 okay, right. to 2K. How good can you be if you never play the 10K Super Millions? Uh, he does play the 10K every now and then. I think he mostly tries to sell it in. But, I mean, just because somebody is not necessarily bankroll to play 10Ks every week doesn't mean they are, they are not incredibly good, right? And I think he's super True. good. But you can't be the best in the world. I'm not saying he, I didn't say that he's the best <laughs> in the world, mate. <laughs> so, <laughs> geez, Louise, I, mate. I'm trying to trying to trying to cross cause some tension. Come on, man. <laughs> give us some rope. <laughs> no, that guy. Uh, if we get to see more of him in the future, you'll be impressed because he's freaking good. All right, he, you're impressed because you, you played with him in the 315 Bounty King, or uh, actually, yes, a couple of times, <laughs> and also the, the the 550 Bounty Kings. But also when I see him at other tables, when I saw him at our final table. But yeah, I've, I've played a lot of hands with him. I think he's legit very good. I feel like I only ever beat him in a pot where I suck out. Like, I don't think I ever got it in good against him. And we played a lot of hands. <laughs> it's like, mate, how do you always have it? All right, on to this one real quick. Limp, 4X. Uh, Pablo Silva actually strikes me a guy who might even limp re-raise this. I don't know why. Because he's like, Ace Deuce is kind of raggedy to limp call. And he's, he's got these moves. I think, he, yeah, I don't know why. I just had this hunch. That Pablo Silva was going to make this play because that's just his style. He he seems to always want to make some moves. He's always very suspicious of the blind versus blind situations, if you've probably noticed. Mm -hmm. oh, this is but Hexen sad. is loving it. I think if I was Hexen now, I honestly think I'm just all in. Keep it simple. It's 1.6 million already. That's so many chips. We're looking at 10 big blinds heading your way. And this is just great because now you're making a very clear difference again between you and the other two guys that are still left. Yeah, <laughs> good play. <laughs> wow. But the thing is, he can't see it. I don't know if he crossed his mind, but he's got a helmet on. <laughs> well, I don't. Maybe it was to Haxton, though. No, I think it's to Pablo, to be honest. I think, you he's, think he's needling him. 
Yeah, because they have a little history, right? Like, you can tell. You can feel it in the hands they're playing. Like, it's like hands that should be folded. They're just still going nuts and floating each other and stuff. So, yeah. All right. Tiny gut shot for Pablo Silva, but it's obviously not a pretty one. Uh, even though almost any straight is good here with three-handed. Haxton flops a pair of sevens. There's good a backdoor spade draw. Yeah, I think Pablo will call. He definitely oh, will call and, and bink it. That's why he call. But he, I was just saying, is there a chance he, he might have even check raise that flop? But uh, call is good. Um, Haxton is, yeah, nah, dead. No chance. I guess the question is what to bet for Pablo. Yeah. I, mean, I, bet I think big. I want to get paid off. So I think I'll, I'll bet small here. I think I'd go for like 420, 440, something like that. I think he's going to get a little greedy. That's my read. Yeah. I, I, think... I don't think you're wrong, but. I think this would be a good moment to just bet like 420, 440. He yeah. goes 645, so good. maybe in the middle of trying to get paid off and greed. I think it, I think this is more in touch with your, your sizing, where he's like, okay, maybe I can get paid off by some like 8x occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, good, good size. I think it's right. Jax. And solver. Ace 5, the solver special. Pablo does not believe in it. Let's go with it immediately. Good timing there. Hexen, let's go with Jack Deuce. And Andreas gets no action on his pocket jiggities. By the way, did you see that? We haven't spoken about it at all, but uh, the poker vloggers and Dark Pork, they bought a poker room, right? In uh, Austin, uh -huh. Texas. The funny thing is, um, when you were, like, before the show started, I'm like, this guy's going to ask me what's happening in poker world. I'm like, I got nothing to say again. Did that cross my mind? I thought, oh, I'll just tell him about the Doug Polk buying a poker room. That's funny. And now that you mentioned it, eh, time to talk about it, I guess, a little bit. I don't think much will happen here. Um, yeah, no, this guy who retired comes back, does a heads-up challenge with Negranu, retires, now buys a poker room, is playing live poker regularly. Just Doug Polk is just it's a funny guy. Yeah, but I think he's also mostly doing that, obviously, to get people there, right? Because people would love to sure. play poker with Doug Polk. Like, he obviously doesn't need to sit there and play 1-2 two or 2-5 two or 5-10. Uh, but I think he just does that to obviously make sure that people have a good time. I mean, like, obviously, Austin, Texas is very far away from me, but I would immediately go if there is even a chance that, you know, one of the three is there. I would love to play with those guys. It'd be super fun. So I think it's apparently, awesome. I think it's good for poker, and it just seems like a really cool thing. Apparently, he just donks off on a bunch of money, too. He's like, my best yeah. day, minus 5K or something like yeah. that. that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. It's like, this might be my best day playing so far. Yeah, no, it's fun. And by the way, I also watched the entire podcast that he did with Dan Bilzerian. I forgot oh. to tell you about that last week, but I did watch the yeah. entire thing. I was gonna, before you, you tell me a little bit more, I was going to say maybe he bought the poker room to set up a heads-up match with Dan Bilzerian <laughs> at that spot. Like, hey, Dan, come to this uh, Austin, Texas small poker room. Let's, let's play a high-stakes match. But uh, yeah, so how'd it go? I thought it was fun. I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, it just It started off like a little... It was so funny because basically Doug was like, hey, man, like, thank you for doing this, Velko. And then was there, he's like, yeah, all right, let's make a $2 million bet or a $1 million bet. And what you said was, I don't forgot the exact word that he used, but basically trying to say that you put me in a bad daylight and you said things that are not fair and you can't really back that up. You set me up by video editing in certain ways. He's like, we'll make a $1 million bet. And the dog folks is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. All I said is welcome to the podcast and you're coming out of the gate with a $1 million bet. Uh, but yeah, it was actually, it was entertaining. It was fun. Doc's still trying to do just like his thing, you know, trying to see, uh, trying to get some good answers out of like where exactly it started. And then, you know, he had his answers ready, avoided maybe one or two questions about specifics because he, that he just doesn't care about those specifics. And Doc Polk just kind of tried to figure it out. It's like, all right, you had a good month, you know, you want 400K, I believe it, but 400K versus all these millions, you know, th there should be more if you really say that you made it in poker. But it was interesting. Yeah. It was a, a fun listen, and I, I thought it was a good, uh, definitely was a like, good podcast. Um, it was kind of like a little fight in this podcast. And I'm not saying like they're kind of like power struck, like kind of like I heard, uh, I read a lot of comments. I didn't listen to it myself, but it sounded like people were saying Dan Bazillion like looked like he was trying to like fight back, and like Doug was having some, some little, well, he had good yeah, answers no. for him and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And like he was resistant, not, like not letting Doug have his way, I suppose. Yeah. Look at this, by the way. Have you? Like Pablo Silva must be ahead percentage wise, right? Uh, I I don't I don't think so. No, no one, not, not one card to go, two cards to go, you know. But obviously, yes. you can't do two cards to go. If it was no ace, oh uh, no! If it was a queen jack nine of two clubs, 
Yes, but not in this spot. Yeah. Check, check. If it was the pair of nines and the tens would play too, then maybe. But somehow Pablo Silva misses, even though he had the world. He could have flopped almost anything or could have rivet almost anything, but he didn't. He does have a 10 now, so he may think, at least I beat a nine. And nine is not what he's up against. Yeah, he probably knows he's, he's dead. He's just wondering, is he getting tarped uh, by King? So he's just going to think he's getting trapped enough. Mm. Wow, the Jack actually got through. Because one one bet would have worked on this hand. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ace-8 suited, ace-jack suited. Things are looking up for Mr. Hexton. You getting uh, ace-8 suited calling vibes or three four bet jam vibes? I don't think he's ever folding. Like... What it is think? hard to play it post flop though, right? 30, it doesn't flop that good. Let's see what Hexen does first. Let's see the sizing. Oh, I think he, yeah, he pumps it up. I think he's folding. I don't know. He seems always suspicious of people a little bit. I think he's at least calling. Yeah, um, the call is the actually very acceptable. I, I, I think, I don't think we're jamming. I think that's too much. You just feel dirty folding ace eight suited here. That's why a lot of people end up doing something. Like you're like, mm -hmm. man, by folding this, I guess I'm folding everything. Yeah, but that's also kind of a silly statement, I think, right? Because we're not folding everything. We're folding ace eight. <laughs> he makes the call though, and here is the ten five five flop with two diamonds. It's not very pretty for either player, but if Hexton just makes Quarter a proper pot. bet here, he takes it down. So dry that quarter pot makes 100% sense. You don't want to get free equity away. They're going to play straight forward because of the chips scenario. Well, okay, even that's less not than gonna... 10%. Yeah, that's not going to make Andreas fold, though. Yeah, we, it's actually we... kind of funny if Ace of hearts because you're like, am I getting milked here or do I have to mandatory call here? Because if I fold this, I'm literally folding everything. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think this would go... Sure, it sucks. 10 5 5 really sucks here. No heart. Even an ace could be bad, and we know it is bad. But I, I just don't. You can have out though. to a chop too, right? Like a 10. Yeah. Uh, maybe he's got king queen. Just funny situations. You don't love it. No. But it is 1.5 big blinds into God knows how many big blind pot. 15. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you have to call. Confusing. Or you just make a play, but that's obviously risky. No, oh, let's go bad. of it. I mean, I I get it because it's a really ugly flop for him, but that just sucks, man. Like it sucks so hard to fold a 2.2 million pot for a 240,000 bet. Yeah, it's almost like you're making a statement. Like, but he, you know, he felt so dirty folding it. You can see here's a, yeah. obviously a, a jam, but uh... I, yeah, I think now he just all ends because he's pissed anyway. He's like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we're all inning, mate. My wow, I, I I'm not in love with that to be honest. Like we're playing twenty something big blinds, chip leader opening into my short stack. They're gonna punish me. I would love to see a jam there, but yeah. yes, twenty two big blinds behind now. Let's turn an eight, Perfect. but there are three hearts on the board. And probably still checks, just nothing. But A C needs to throw some chips in. Too vulnerable. Way, way too vulnerable. King would have bet already. This time he goes for the tiny bet. 250k chippies. Takes it down. He's back up to 4.3 million. Pablo Silva's been a little quiet lately. It's kind of been the Isaac Haxton show. I can see some action happening here in funny, way, funny ways. Not sure which one, though. Limp raise. Pablo raising. Bump it up. Make it like yeah. five. Wow. Wow. What? Interesting. All right. I guess sometimes you get these vibes like I'm getting tarped, you know, like whether it's true or not. It's very weird because King Jack suit is such a I guess he didn't want to raise and get jammed on and forced to fold or forced to call off against like pocket pair. And I can I can get behind that. I'm not used to you using the word tarped very often. What is it? <laughs> Trapped. But why is it tarped? I don't know. It's a meme. Just people spelled it funny. Just like tarp. Okay, I'm not this familiar with this meme. You never heard of it. All right, never no. mind. <laughs> uh, how old are you, Roddy? God damn, I'm older than you, aren't I? I'm 34. <laughs> what am I? 80, I was born in 85, July. What is that? So you're 36. Okay, thanks. I don't remember. <laughs> I really don't. I thought I was 35. 
That feels bad. No, you're 36. <laughs> uh, well, we know value bets coming in. Paired board, kind of a funny one. You bet big to try to rep something? Some bluffs? This five. That's an annoying spot for Andreas because this is actually a spot where I feel like I would be getting bluffed here. It's like, what, what is happening? You know, you didn't raise pre flop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually understand the call here, even though he's wrong, but this was just a, a weird hand. Pablo Silva playing it in a very tricky way or in a tarpy way. Is that a thing? <laughs> but yeah, I, I can't blame Andreas for calling down the river. Uh, should, yeah, I expect Pablo in these chip sack scenarios, even though of a hand this strong, two nines, he will want to keep pots small because Andres is getting severely short relative to them. But it feels like we've been switching gears here. We went from playing very big pots with crappy hands to playing small pots with good hands. It's kind of funny how that happens. Yep, two nines uh, probably going to pay off any turn and river. I mean, sorry, any river. Oh, this one, though, maybe not. Who knows? Should go check, check, actually. Yeah. Well, Axen is a, a value meister, though. He will find some tiny value here and there. Nah, but uh, he's actually getting trapped by Asex a lot. Limp. I don't really see why you would bet, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And he will check it down. Pablo Silva will receive the bad news. I think this is obviously a big uh, moment for all of them, where it's like, okay, you just didn't limp, you didn't raise King Jack suited on your big blind, and now you played nines in a very tricky manner too. I'm sure that Hexen and Andreas are taking note. Lines go up, 100k, 200k. Your second favorite blind level, Nenonoko. Actually not true. I probably would prefer 500,000, 1 million, but I don't think we've ever seen that. No. Have we? Yeah. No. So I want to say maybe at a, one favorite. of our super big ones, but I don't think we got that high. We got high, but not that high. I think I did. I do remember 250k, 500k, maybe even maybe we've seen it once because we obviously had these super millions where people had a week to qualify and they had multiple phase ones into a big day two. And you had like 600 entries almost. Maybe mm, I don't know. And we also casted a special one once that was like a smaller buy-in that had a massive field. The one that Pikachu won. I don't know if you remember that. I think the other <laughs> blinds were very high. Pikachu? Mm, I don't know. I don't know if I remember that one. Yeah, he's an awesome guy, and I hyped him up. I picked him to win it, and he did win it. Because I told you, I think he's really good, too. And you're like, why did you play with him? I'm like, yeah, I did. He owned me. <laughs> no, that Pikachu guy is good. <laughs> He's kind of like the Mamo guy, maybe slightly lower stakes on average, but he's very good. Too. He plays a lot of the three hundreds and the five hundreds too. The grinders just, will know him. It's funny you're just so in touch with these like other guys, which is cool. I like it. We need someone who's giving the love to the. You have like these strong hunches on the 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 Nordic players, right? Like the the Swedish, the fin Finnish people. You love them, the PLO guys, the Ottoman Alpha. But this could be it for Andreas, by oh. the way. This could yeah, be too. it, man. I feel like there is a very good chance he just jams this, and he will jam it. Pablo Silva will gladly call with the Kings. Ace eight versus Kings. Didn't Hexen have an ace too? I'm not totally sure, but 100%. Yeah. Okay, we have outs. Oh. We have club outs. An ace or a club on the river, or this is it for our man from Finland. He gets the club. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Big, 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 big hand for him. Pablo must be. Fuming, but we can't see because he's got the little helmet on. Oh no, I see, I see smoke coming out of that helmet, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's a punch the punch the table, slam the table kind of moment. Even if you're a pro. Yep, especially this deep. Oh, kings this time around for Andreas. Axton has a nice hand at least to play. Small blind, big blind, nine seven. You probably look at this like this is way better than the garbage you're sitting on. If you're sitting on some 8-4 offsuit or some 10-5, I'm ready to play a big pot with my 9-7 of spades. Definitely oh. calling here, right? 100% flop coming. See what happens. Gotcha. Definitely going to see yeah. a turn card. Mm -hmm. For sure. Like You even have one over card to the board as well, so that always feels good. Gotcha. Backdoor spades. 
Axon probably looks at it like that's a good flop for me, baby. <laughs> yeah. Not not too shabby. Uh, so we should see like a little small bet third pot. Check call. Check raising doesn't even make sense. Oh, oh, tiny check raise. So he's trying to get blow off those like random high cards, I guess, or like a queen rag. But wow, Ooh. spade on the turn. Spicy. Wow, Andres, he's in such good shape to potentially double up again. Yep. I think whatever hacks and bets here, Andreas will just all in, right? And even, yeah, oh, well, snap call, I guess. Snap call it is. And Axon does have a lot of outs. He needs a spade or a six. Andreas just got lucky on the river. This time he gets unlucky on the river as the eight of spades <laughs> rolls off. And that is going to do it. Andreas is out in third place. Does walk away with $266,000. We have our heads up between Nananoko's pick of the week and the guy he actually picked to win it. Oh my God. Where's, <laughs> where's my doodle? I want to throw up a rainbow out of my mouth. You're running way too good right now. This is gross. Oh, double kill. <laughs> that was a good one. Hey, I got it one for you before, before you see this flop of pocket fours. Do you think Andres now says, how many miles to Hollywood? Oh, why? <laughs> why? Because he got beat that? up by Hollywood Haxton then. Because he's, yeah, he's, he's just. But that's not how you say it. No. Oh, my God. It's terrible. I didn't watch the episode. You would know more than me. Yeah, no. It, it, it's more just that, like, you're in a hand, you're tanking. It's not something you say oh. after the hand. It's like, while well, someone is tanking, whether it's your opponent, it's like, oh, a bit of acting. How many miles from here to Hollywood? It's not after you bust out of the tournament. That's the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> Thought maybe he'd be walking to Hollywood. I don't know. Anyways, yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure, mate. Three to one chip lead. If Haxon scoops this tournament, I get around eleven points. That'd be nice. Yeah, that's a good exit. And then I, I start getting a little bit concerned. I'm like, all right, from here on out, I actually need to pick winners because otherwise it gets dicey. That's a good win for you if he does get it. And Pablo Silva, by the way, we didn't even talk about it, but back to back top twos for him. The last mm -hmm. guy that did it was the Dutch guy. I forgot. Little Monk. I was mm -hmm. like, what's his name again? Little Monk it was. He obviously won it the very first time he made it to a final table, and he took top two the following week. This is the first time we see someone go back-to-back -back top two. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's super impressive. Yes, he's got a, a hill to climb, but uh, he's, got, he's got the talent. He's last time he fought Adamo, almost shipped, and now he's got to fight Isaac Haxton. You know, yeah. like, they give him tough ones. This feels like a video game almost, you know? It's yeah. like, all right, you make it to the final stage, you get Michael Adamo. Next week, you make it to the what? final stage. Just Look same. at this! 8-6 yeah, six, six, offsuit. Eight. Jam on a raise. Jam on a raise. This is... Wow. I, in, in a weird way, I kind of like it. Like, I know it's freaking crazy, but even against, like, a, you know, two big picture cards or an ace-king or an ace-queen, like 6-8... You can flop him dead, you know, and if he folds, it's great. If you are flipping for all of it, like only against overpairs, I think you're actually in really bad shape. It's not even that bad of a play. As Hexen now flops bottom two pair with 10 9. Uh, great move by Hexen. Yeah, and I don't know if you know, but Hexen used to be a professional heads up player. Only exclusively. Yeah, so, so was Lycon and mate, and he still wants <laughs> to chop it up. So I don't know if I can trust any of that. <laughs> Call is here. Yeah, but Haxton, he knows how to play. He knows how to play heads up sitting goes. He knows how to play heads up cash. Like this is just heavily in, and he's got the chip stack really heavily in favor to, for him right now. But we'll I see think anything that involves four suits and fifty two cards, Haxton knows how to play really well. I, I don't think. I think we can just wrap it up there. I'm I don't sure think there's do anything he's bad too. at. I yeah. think you do five card. Of course, Haxton would own anyone in five card. Wow, I'm sure of it. Jack rolls up on the river, 3.1 million chippies in the middle. Pablo Silva doesn't really have a hand where he calls off another bet, though, because at this point, you really beat nothing. Probably going to ship nothing. it in. Yeah. But yeah, Jack Silva will fault. He, he actually doesn't beat anything. So, Rowdy, here's another question you seem to be in touch with. Are we going to make the break? No, I already said before this hour started that we were not going to make the break. I said so all you, four players. You're holding. You hold, yeah, of course, I'm holding. Yeah. Okay. Wait, it's, it's, it's as good as over. One guy has 16 big blinds. The other guy has... How many big blinds is that? I don't know. Uh, 200? 90? Okay, yeah, 90. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god you're getting worse mate you're right, getting worse see. should be limp you, you against 16 15 big blind ish you, you limp a lot of uh hands heads up i limp call i think yep i feel like he's gonna spike an eight as well that's the sad part accident oh, oh. he's been super solid but he's ran good in some six spots, right? Yeah, like of course. King 10 suited, and what's the other one that just happened? Uh, that, that was the biggest one by far. Uh, I yeah. mean, he just had a hand with 10 9, and that was obviously a decent pot. The King 10 against Mikita is big. Flops bottom two pair again, but it is a monotone board, all hearts this time around. Pablo Silva flops a pair, and any pair in heads up. You probably think it's yeah. kind of good, and then you're like, okay, this is such a wet board that I need to defend it, I need to defend. Okay, that might save him. Yeah, it should be slow to next. Oh, yeah, obviously the 9-7 suit into the two kings was freaking brutal by Isaac Haxton. Uh, that was yeah. that was rough. Sorry, I, that one I almost forgot about. Uh, Eight of spades on the river. So Haxton probably checks unless he's going to block that. Pablo, yeah, he's dead. Yeah, Pablo probably feels like he's being trapped. So he will just check. He's like, damn it. That's maybe one hand that I could have gotten you to fall, but... Hexen wins another one. The rich get richer. Not quite a 200 big lines, but he does have many. I'm feeling good. Great day so far. And I talk Pablo to you again in one week. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. Right. For the people who don't know, so not a no-co normally. <laughs> like we actually get a message in our uh, private channel each and every single week. It's like, hey guys, please show up. At for me, it is 6.25 for Nanonoko. I don't know what time it is, but it's 25 minutes past the hour. And Nano has always shown up basically 20 minutes after he's supposed to show up. Sometimes he shows up a minute before we go live. Sometimes it's two minutes, but that's kind of it. You know, anything between one minute and three minutes of going live. Today, he showed up 12 minutes before we actually were supposed to start, which is still 15 minutes late or whatever. But I was like, wow, Nano, are you okay? You're so early. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm a bit tired. I was like, we've got 10 minutes. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go take a break because we all know that I only talk to you when the show starts. I was like, mate, come on. 10 minutes for the one time in your life. You're 10 minutes early. And he still runs away. Ridiculous. The old TS charge. What can I say? True statement. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to hide. I'm not going to lie. Don't want to talk to you. In <laughs> <laughs> piss off. King Jack. For, oh, oh, Jack on the river. That is lovely. I mean, it was a fun board, right? Because any King Jack Queen was good for uh, Pablo. Well, maybe not the King of Clubs or the Queen of Clubs, but every other one would be. Uh, I should have vibe at this for sure because um, the ace is really heavily out of ha Haxon's range because he probably would have gotten pre flop with these shallow stacks. So mm -hmm. you need to value that. Represent Miss Clubs. But the problem and he does is... go for all of it. Haxton still has a pair. And this is the kind of board where it is somewhat hard to make a pair. But then you think of the hands that you could beat. And it's like King Queen. It's like, no, you don't beat that. That's a straight. There aren't too many hands that he really beats here. Well, wow. makes the call. Yes. Tries to be a hero with bottom pair. The pair of four is Pablo Silva. Sick value bet there on the river with his jack. And he's completely back in it, baby. A6 mm -hmm. against King 6 now. I just felt like my 10 points is, is it's walking away slowly from me. Yeah, nice double. Yeah, um, I guess he just thought he had pure bluffs too there randomly because Haxton with the 9-4 clubs, you want to pick off clubs, but you're holding a 9 of clubs, so you block a lot of those ones. But I guess he just thought there was a random chance he's just pure bluffing because it was limp pot. So mm -hmm. he was like, ace, does, ace my raise, you know. Why would a 10 value bet this way? Nice. It was like the perfect sizing. Maybe if yeah. Pablo bets smaller, he doesn't get called. So really well done. Well, it seems almost impossible for Pablo to lose this hand. Actually, it is impossible. Hexen is drawing that. So let's see if Pablo can win a few more chips. It is maybe worth mentioning that both players are running out of time bank. Pablo hmm. Silva only has 51 <laughs> seconds left. Hexen has 54 seconds left. So we could be entering the quickest heads up of all time if both of them run out of time. I didn't notice that. And that's actually going to be really funny. That's the first time. Usually it's just one guy with that kind of spot. Yeah. King high here beats heart draws only if he decides to continue, which is. This wouldn't be a bad call at all, right? By Hexen. I would yeah, probably not be like. Reasonable. Mm -hmm. And it, 
Yeah. It's good not to have hearts in your hand when you call, but um, yeah, he's just getting a like, value talent right now. Wow. Mm -hmm. Closing the gap. Well, I got a question. Yeah, go We're ahead. We're going to make the break still. We're going to make I the mean, break. Now, now, now I'm starting to feel like, yeah, it's possible, but... I mean, 15 minute heads up between these two blinds this big blinds will go up again in three hands. I, I mean, I will stick with my original prediction and that is no, we're not going to make the break. I think it ends in 13 minutes from now. Mm. All right. Two minutes All before right. the break. You, you know that, um, that famous game so it looks like where they like choose like pick this door and then like, do you want to change your answer? And that's what I'm trying to do to you. I'm trying to get you to change your answer. T-Mole or whatever theorem. You've heard of it? I kind of know what you mean, but I've never watched it and I don't know exactly what it's called. But no, I'm not changing my answer. By the way, your internet is acting up a little bit. I know you can't do anything about it, but you're kind of turning into a very slow robot every now and then. Yeah. Uh, I can tell because like I get this connection unstable thing pops up, so I just shut up right after. <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, seven three against four three. There is a pair on the side of Pablo Silva. Hexen uh, is basically playing the second, not low at this point. Only deuce three would be worse. So he's gonna overbet the pot. The wheels are coming off a little bit here for Hexen. Yeah, two two wrong calls in a row. Wrong. Oh play. my! Does what? he have a straight? He has a straight. Does he have mate. a straight. <laughs> he actually. <laughs> oh, Hexen. Hexton, that is gross, man. You can't do a man like that. Oh my! Did you look too... twice too, Roddy? Yeah, yeah. I was like, there's actually no way for him to win this. He's betting the second not low. Sizes down a little bit on the river, and Pablo's gonna throw up a rainbow doodle if he makes this call, and I can't blame him. <laughs> Dude, it's called a rainbow puke, not a rainbow doodle. God damn it, Roddy! But my God, oh, so call that's gross. Puke now, yeah. That is gross. Hexton with four. Wow, that's one of the dirtiest ones I've seen in a while. Actually, normally you see the straights immediately, but this one was so mm -hmm. silly that you're like, no. Oh. All right. It's funny because well. we both did the same thing, like the pause. Did he really make a straight? Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> no, like there was no way. Like this is I didn't even know he had outs, but yeah. the bottom gotcha. Isn't it the second time that he drills it? Didn't he drill like a random wow. six earlier or something as well? Just hit the eight, floated. Now he's going to value bet this himself. Well, this man deserves to hit an eight, okay? And then a few others, because that was gross. Uh, big bet. Queen high. Mm. If he's getting floated sometime, they, they got to act yeah, quick, huh? They got no time bank. This crossing their minds a little bit. Calls. Another bad call from Axton. Axon is definitely trying to be uh, a hero today. Three pretty brave calls on the river, and all three of them were wrong. Pocket fours, baby. Let's get a set. There is one hand in GG Poker that's better than Pocket Aces, and that is Pocket Fours. So if you guys new to this website, Pocket Fours always make a set. Unless they don't need to make a set. No, mate. Why are you doing me dirty like that? That's so unnecessary, Haxton. Give me that flop, baby. At least he shows you he's playing it, all right? For all yeah, the of course. Chips. He understands. Why would you just jam a set preflop? That's so silly. Right. That's a good point. So he kind of misplayed it. Yeah, he misplayed it bad, mate. We could have <laughs> ended the tournament there. It's fun. It would have flopped up. Barry has a set. It would have been beautiful. 10 right, 4 against we... Ace 5. Ace 5 still good. We back to reality again. Just curious. Pocket fours don't always make a set. Come on, Roddy. Jesus. Kind of do, man. Everyone believes in it. You should play poker with me one day. I hope that, you know, we can meet up in, I don't know, any place where we can also play some online poker. I'll play some online poker. You're going to laugh at the chat interactions I have. It's just pocket four memes left and right. <laughs> try, hey, why don't you try finding um, um, a GIF of pocket four so that whenever a, a four comes out on a flop, you just spam the, the GIF. That'd be hella funny. I uh, didn't do it yet, but that was, I was actually, before you said it, I was thinking of it immediately. I was like, I wonder if there are like, but there must be force gifts because I believe that they tweeted out that the gift database has over like a 1 million gifts or something. So sure, there must be some gifts related to either pocket force or just a bunch of force, you know, that will do the same thing. Mm -hmm. That'd be really funny.
It's just like <laughs> flopping four, and you just start betting, and then they're just mine, like mine scared. Did. They've got top two. They're like, all right, I guess I fold. <laughs> <laughs> My reputation exceeds me. Flush draw for Hexton here with queen five of hearts. Yeah. Pablo Silva flop stop pair. They should go check check. Okay. Mm, interesting. Might set up Hexton to go for an over bet, to be honest. If he did that earlier for gut shot, he might go again. Mm -hmm. Oh, check. Guess check calls this play. Pablo must bet here. Like, what? Oh, no. That's, I mean, at least the deuce is not that important, I guess, because there are seven, seven on the board, but that's a very bad river for Pablo. I don't understand how he played his hand here, Nano. Really slow, but uh, wow, he's going to get baited because we're going to, now he's going to bet the 10 twos. He's yeah, going to get check raised. He's going to have no time. It might make a wrong decision. He's got 34 seconds and a bit extra, so he's got 40 in total. Hexton clearly is going to bet big here. I don't know how big. 1.8? Yeah, 1.81 it is. It just felt like the right amount to race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just falls quickly. Brutal. I mean, Pablo Silva has played great poker over the last two weeks, but this was a weird one to me. I don't really know what he did in this hand. Well, he's, he's down on chips right now. Lane 10. I would Almost start with like check he call was, here. He, hmm? he was Go setting ahead. the trap, right? So he was just trying to, I yeah. guess, make Hexen start betting, and then he could call off, and then he could raise on the river, and maybe Hexen would make a crying call with a lower pair. 9-3, but... <laughs> also winning this yeah. hand. I think you're right uh, why he checked the flop, because he saw him bet the gut shot early, so like, all right, maybe he'll do something silly, and I'll just call any turn in river. Hexen mm -hmm. value betting is three high flush. Yep. It's the, war, the worst flush there is, but it's good to go. Oh, Pablo Silva raises. Yeah, that's actually really hard to go. Oh, Hexton nice. falls, man. Pablo. Okay, okay. We'll forget about that 10 deuce hands real quick. Didn't work out. You said the trap. It's all good. Great play there by Pablo Silva. He's got Maybe game. he also watched the stream because Hexton also made a small value bet earlier with a weak flush. You remember that? It was like the seven high flush. Kind of that similar sizing, I feel like. So maybe Pablo picked up on that. And he's like, if that happens yeah. again, I think I can sniff it out. Of course they watch the stream. Poker player, like, let whole cards up. Don't watch the stream. Come on. Uh, but yeah. All right. So we got Limp Ray's call. Why four hearts taking it, looking for a delay bet opportunity. I don't think Pablo can really bet. Okay. He's actually going to bet. They got some, they got some good meta going. Like, you can see the mind games going on, like, trying to, like, Take that one step further, trying to predict their moves and, and going for it. A6 against A5 would be a big one. Uh, yeah, it's a good... You need to check some aces, otherwise you'll never have an ace if you, if you check on the flop. So it makes sense, going to see a call. Maybe check, check, turn. Makes a lot. A six could play, right? Okay, well, obviously it plays now, but... Could the six play? Yeah. It yeah, would. of course. Pair the board. I mean, a six would. Yeah, a six would play with a ten or a nine, but even with any king, check. Yeah, like every card. Okay, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I feel like it's like is this a trap question? Then <laughs> what are you asking me? Here? It's, it's like there's two on the cards. Of course, it could. <laughs> is queen against do six? It's a nice Hexen trap here. There. Taking the rags up. Gonna go down in flames. Pablo Silva is closing the gap after this one. Yeah, 2.2, 2.6 it is in the end. Well done, Pablo. I said it's gonna end at 10.22 for me, so that's three minutes from now. You Still possible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the blinds are big, though. The blinds are very big, so. Yeah, of course. Any kind of reasonable cooler is possible, but 10.6. Pablo's got um, game. Has he overtaken yeah, yet? No, not yet, but he's very close. He's actually playing really well. Pablo's playing really well. I always like a guy who goes with his gut. And I've seen that from the two final tables last week and this week. Like he just he thinks it's the right play, he'll make he'll make it. Some guys they think it's the right play, but then they fold. You know, like mm -hmm. Pablo is a trigger player. King nine versus four five. Hexen has a pair and an open ender. Pablo Silva has Two high cards. King high. 
Like he was like, hmm, do I call this like a little yeah. too ambitious? Yep. Could be drawing that. Didn't want to take the chance. King six. Good hand to just <laughs> jam into the chip later. <laughs> I mean, Check look, it's that that's I more know. for a I game. know, mate. I know. I was setting the tarp, okay? That was a tarp, <laughs> mate. For you to correct me. Uh all right, so check call. Pair five's good. Probably doesn't know if it is though. Uh I don't nice think river. Pablo will bet because King High is still good enough to, to take it down. Mm -hmm. Goes check check. 1.8 million chippies heading Haxton his way. So he will maintain the lead. Haxton truly is almost out of time at this point. He has 10 seconds left. Oh, oh big my. hand alert. A6 against ace check. How many chips are we going to send? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. Way to not if they were play. like deeper or shorter, we might have saw extra action here. But still going to get some action. Wow. Look at that one. Little hearts. Mm -hmm. Flush draw for Hexton. Pablo Silva has a gut shot. With a 10, Maybe. he would make a straight. Is that a chop? Nope. Wow. <laughs> Mate, you gave me such a hard time for misreading the board one time last week. One time where I was like, I thought someone could have chopped with Ace King, Ace Five, or whatever. There was obviously no chop outs. And you went on about it for minutes. You have said like 17 outrageous things tonight, okay? Outrageous. <laughs> Look, yeah. I didn't say it was a chop. I'm, it's a question. So I'm not making a statement, whereas you made a statement. See the difference? <laughs> oh my God, sure. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll I'll make everything a question from here on out. It's gonna be great. Does um, uh, does GG have the thing where it tells you that your hand currently at all? Like, yes. oh, you got well, a full house. It definitely. T I actually don't know if it tells it by default, but in uh, it, it starts like there's a little pop up now at the bottom if you have like two pair or trips mm -hmm. and like obviously not in five card it doesn't say two pair because you always have two pair, but in no limit it does say two pair or you have a set or a full house or a flush or a straight. I yeah. don't think it tells you that you have ace high. I think it needs to be a pair or better, or two pair or better in no limit. But you're not sure. Maybe it's like says on the right, but I know that there is like this little black pop up underneath your chip stack where it says if you have two power better in no limit. Ah, okay, yeah, no. So that's what that's what I like to reference. Is like, okay, do I tell me, do I have something? I guess high <laughs> card would still be high card though. I guess it doesn't help. Never mind, never mind. Completely disregard what I said. Check check. Let's check check on the river. They both have a pair, but the pair of queens of Pablo is good. We are now at the moment where I predicted. This would end. I think we're gonna make it to a break. I want to change my prediction. We're dead <laughs> even in chips. Uh, I didn't Pablo's, give it an option. Yeah, Pablo has been playing great. I should have gone for the other door. <laughs> um, we haven't talked about the prize they're playing for at all. That's like a uh, hundred k. We're doing yes. Here. It's a hundred and two thousand dollar difference by the looks of it. See. The difference between Haxton and Lycon is Haxton didn't ask if we can chop. This is a real heads up professional here, okay? Yeah, but then the, the other difference is that Lycon did win it, and Haxton, he has not been <laughs> winning it so far because he had a monstrous lead, made a couple of hero calls. They've all been wrong. And then he even got oh. very lucky with the 4 5 or 3 4, whatever the hell he was betting. 3 4, I guess. Big one here. Him. What a monster draw, by the way, for Pablo. If Hexen raises here, we could still get it all in. Like I would yeah. never fold in a million years if I'm Pablo. There's wow, a call. He Will he make a play? He's got to think Hexen's got a king a lot. Checks. Wow. What, a, what an awful river for Pablo. Too many out syndrome. Aces. Aces. He's like, Axon's stuttering. He's like, do I limp? Do I raise? I'm confused. All right, goes for the yeah. min raise. <laughs> Axon has once more a pretty decent late ace three against queen 10. We are one minute away from entering our third break of the evening. We do flop top pair here for Pablo Silva and a gut shot. Is ace a spade enough to check call here? Check raise apparently. Pablo's like, all right, mate. I wouldn't even be surprised if Pablo comes over the top. Where he's just like, mate, I've had it with you. 
I'll gladly yes. take this. And he does come over the top. Well done, Pablo. Uh, he's been playing great, man. Mm -hmm. He actually has been playing great. And that is going to do it for our third hour. So this heads up will continue in four minutes and 50 seconds. We obviously hope you guys are having fun. The Russian Cash Friday is still happening every single Friday. If you get one of the GG members on your table, all the cash drops are doubled. And obviously on Saturday night, we have a little uh, beat the pros where you guys can still knock me out in my second hand of the tournament. Nano and I will take a quick break. We'll see you guys in four minutes and 30 seconds. Hi, I'm the new Daniel Negreanu. And I'm the old Daniel Negreanu. We both represent online poker sites. We both love Hold'em. I mean, we're basically the same person. Absolutely, man. I used to love watching you play, the way you would read people, call out their hands, and then, of course, call anyway. Oh, stop. I'm blushing. But old Daniel, man, I got to ask, man, what uh, what's up with this look you got going on here? You you tired or something? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of all these freaking beats I've been taking. It's freaking ridiculous. Look at this motherfucking hand. This motherfucker is calling the freaking turn with this piece of freaking hand. Freaking absurd. Whatever, I don't even know why I'm so upset. I mean, bad beats, they're just part of the game, right? I mean, they don't really have to be. You see that? I took a bad beat, then GG Care took care of some of my losses. Hashtag, thanks GG. You think uh, maybe I could borrow that laptop and play a little while? No, definitely not. Just say GG to that site you're playing on over there. You just think you're so clever. Nope, just a good read. GG. Poker star. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.
Welcome back to the third hour of the High Roller Super Millions Week 27 Season 2 as we are continuing the heads-up battle between Hexton and Pablo Silva. Neither of them has a whole lot of time left in the time bank. <laughs> and Hexton casually flops a full house in the first hand after the break. I feel Hexton has been running better, but Pablo, he's been playing incredibly good. This has been a good heads-up match. They've been swinging, making call-downs. Uh, Hexton is just... He runs pretty good, though, huh? Look at this, 6-3. Yep. He's been flopping it. Don't use any of your time bank, mate. Okay. He calls right, <laughs> right when it started. Pablo ends up with 10 high. Well, is he going to burn some chips here? He's trying to move his opponent off. Wow. Oh. Over bet. Just first hand back on the break. Is that a thing? Like you try to win the hand no matter what after the break? I don't know. I am not totally in touch with that one, but that's uh, unfortunate timing for Pablo Silva, who played so well. Yeah, he lost way more chips here than he was supposed to lose. Accent did use uh, four seconds, by the way, in that hand. So now he only has three seconds left. But I think he can. I think he's okay with that after winning like, three million chips. Obviously, if you guys did uh, not tune in last week, Pablo Silva did make it to the heads up as well. He lost to Michael Adamo, but he did walk away with three hundred and ninety-nine thousand dollars. As I'm just stuttering a little bit, as Pablo Silva makes the call with four deuce. And Haxton flops trip jacks again. Seems like uh, Pablo Silva is in uh, StarCraft 2, there's a term called the Kong. You know, when you're okay. a Kong and you always take second places. It uh, seems like Pablo Silva is becoming King Kong at this moment. Yeah, so, it's actually, it seems like the break was bad for Pablo Silva because something happened where he just felt like getting feisty with these funny hands. Yeah. Another $396 overlay for $100 <laughs> turbo, 22 minutes left. I'm pretty sure that overlay will get covered too, but all right. Pablo it's does like make a... it. <laughs> Go it's ahead. like a meme. I was going to say it's like a new yeah. meme now. Yeah. Like, you know, if it's like 7K left and there's 7K <laughs> overlay and there's six minutes left, okay, I'll hop in. But 22 minutes, four buy-ins. I'm pretty sure that four people will hop in there. As Haxton wins another one, this time with a pair of kings. Oh, poor Pablo Silva played so good. I like this limp, though. I think you need to try to induce action. Here you go. Perfect. And you can just all in and take it down. Mm -hmm. Just don't use time bank. Okay, here's a qu good, another good question. Oh, is someone going to hit zero seconds by the time this ends? Yeah, Haxton, 100%. 100%. It's not a hundred. Inevi inevitable. All right. We'll see. Seven deuce. Seven deuce race. And Hexton lets go of the birthday. <laughs> Can't believe you got that in before. <laughs> <laughs> of course, mate. Well, all righty. Running out of One, time. Zero. Oh, is it zero? So does he touch the red? Yeah, that's a different question. You didn't ask me <laughs> if he's going to touch the red. You said, is someone going to hit zero? That's a lot of zeros, mate. Technically speaking, doesn't he have like a little bit above a zero? Like a half? No, <laughs> no, that's not how it works. <laughs> All Makes right. the call with A7. So let's see. You are smart. You got it. Uh, nothing, nothing. Wow, did he just float him eight seven of clubs? Yeah. This guy is... Next level, but Pablo might bet again. He might be like, <laughs> wouldn't you limp jam me if you had an ace? Which is probably true, right? Nice bet. Well done, Pablo crawling his way back up. Closing in on 7 million chippies now. You can see these two guys are not trying to... They're like fighting for every pot right now. Like really mm -hmm. hard. It's been, a, it's been a great evening of poker. It's been really fun. The final four was excellent. Really sucks for Mikita the way he went out. I think he deserved a bit better there, but it's been a lot of fun. Okay, it's another bet coming in. One more bet, pot size bet, but this is tough for Hex, and he's just got 9 4. He calls, he puts his opponent on a draw. He does, but the, one of the draws get there, the backdoor hearts that would probably play this way. Do you think Pablo jams? I think he needs to continue. I have no idea. Though. It's very hard. Oh, he gives up. He gives up, and Haxton, his nine is good. Great hand there by Haxton. 
showing us that he can't just get it done. If he plops the four hearts with trip jacks, he can also make the tough correct calls. And this is uh, just when Pablo picked up a tiny bit of momentum after he lost a lot of chips, he loses a bunch. I know you're waiting to see if we're going to touch the red. I just know it. Yeah. No, I was going to ask you another question, but I realized it's really dumb. I was going to say, do you think we make the next break? But then you get mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. And I also think we'll randomly turn this into a five card Omar match and Anatoly and Mike Lodema will sit down too and it turns into a cash game. Like all of that is possible so before the next break. <laughs> all righty. Uh, a lot of 10 4 offsuits, apparently. That's the uh, end of the hour. Let's see. You know, is... hmm? I was just thinking of another wild variant of poker. You know, it would be really cool if what? you could have a button where it's like turn current payouts into cash, but at least play cash for 45 minutes. <laughs> That'd be pretty sick. <laughs> That'd be sick. Pretty funny. Yeah, if we got super personal. Haxton has a got a ball, right? Yep. Needs a five. Does not get there. And seven is best. They should have a thing where okay, after the heads up, uh you're the the guy who lost is allowed to say lock in heads up for X amount of hands for this much yeah. of money. And the other guy cannot refuse if you won. But maybe not all of the difference, but like half the difference so that he doesn't, he still comes out ahead. But that'd be really funny. Accent casually flopping a straight. This time with 10 6. You are right. 10 6 is connected. <laughs> it is. That's the first in his Super Millions history. <laughs> all right. Accent over bets the pot. Pablo Silva has nothing playing the board six high. I don't know why we're thinking, Pablo. There's yeah, really is... no happy ending to this hand. Pablo Silva, don't do anything that you shouldn't do, mate. He's burning time. Again. What he calls? I mean, I know he has, I guess, an open ender, but he has the bottom end of the open ender. No. Oh, man, that's that, questionable. This is just no time bank kind of like wishful thinking. Yeah. You make a straight, the 10 rolls off, the guy has a jack. Just, yeah. No. Like, if he has the 10 there, I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, maybe, you know, we're dreamers, but yeah, that's fine. But with the six, and then the other card being in four as well, I'm not feeling that call by Pablo Silva. Yeah, I, maybe a little bit of uh, I'm losing chips, trying to create something to happen. Sometimes you so, can let it go. Let it go. The Doyle Brunson. Excellent. He doesn't love a stand full ring, but he likes it heads up. <laughs> <laughs> 12 big blinds let's go yeah. all righty kings is What's it short Haxen enough do? where Haxon just donks it off no limbs min race maybe like make it 600k yeah i feel like you do just force a call but a little bit too much unfortunately mm -hmm. wasted i think i'd rather yeah. limp i'd rather check yeah I, yeah same but maybe he's hoping that obviously Hexen has a decent hand and Hexen is like limp trapping and hoping for a jam. Yeah. This makes sense. King three, 12 big blinds. Let's it go. Good call. Feel like we're getting towards the end. If uh, Hexen limps here, I think I'll just snap jam a six of diamonds. Of course. So it's just a matter of win right now and if it's going to be a double or not exactly i kind of hope that we get a double i've had a great time tonight this has been a very fun episode pablo silva played very well other than that six forehand that wasn't too hot uh and got a bit unlucky when hexen flopped the full house with six three that he really wanted to win it there we go let's go up yeah this is it pocket trees ace queen Let's go. All in by Haxton. Obviously a call by Pablo Silva. And let's see if Ace Queen can get there. Maybe counterfeit. Okay, that's not a great start for Ace Queen. That's bad. a very bad turn. Needs an Ace or a Queen on the river. Or it's all over. And that's the King. So that's not good. Isaac Haxton wins his second high roller Super Millions. He did it in Season 1. And he will now join the very select squad of guys that have won it in Season 1 and Season 2. 
The list, of course, includes Michael Demo, Isaac Barron, uh, Arthur Martirosian, and I think one or two other players. Uh, Mr. Gamble, maybe, already? Lena 900? Yeah. And Isaac Hexen joins them, as he should. He came in with a middling stack and just had a phenomenal run throughout the entire evening. Give me those 10.5 uh, or 10.8 points, man. Nailed it. Isaac Haxton. You can't bet against the Hollywood. Super solid. Really, really fun to watch uh, Pablo fight him like he was fighting. fighting. Two second places for Pablo. Nothing to take away from him. I think he played great. Uh, but Haxton, he's, he played heads up professionally for a long, long time. Did not ask for a deal. Got rewarded. 100k, <laughs> 100K uh, heads up match. It, it's... It's a, it's, it's a match he's used to, though. He normally plays these kind of stakes, you know? Axiom just was all around great. He did get lucky in key spots. One of them was against Pablo. No, no, against Makita, sorry. King-10 yeah. suited against the Ace-King, of course. And then he got lucky with the 9-7 suit. Check raises, jams the flush draw in the little gutty. Inks it against Kings. But uh, he played great, too. What can we say? And I also think maybe not the most crucial hand of the night, but the hand where he bet twice with 4-3 and he somehow randomly pinged the straight on the river where we both kind of like leaned toward our money it's like is that a straight and i don't even think isaac haxton knew he had a straight until it actually showed up that he had a straight yeah haxton obviously is a phenomenal player we always love having him at our final tables we hype it up We're always happy that he's here and i think he just delivered once more i'm sure plenty of people put some money on haxton we did say in our final table betting segment, like if you give me a hundred bucks, I would have bet most of it on Makita, but I would always put 10 bucks on Hexen just to break even, you know, just in case he would win it. And it's obviously great to see him win it again. It was a very fun addition. And I think especially once we got down to the final four, I think all four of them had their moves, got personal between some of them. It was just a really cool evening of poker. Yeah, it was very action-packed down to four. Because sometimes you get down to four and it still can be quite tight, but every single one of them were playing pots, uh, trying to steal it, especially Pablo Silva. Like, he had history with Makita for a while, and then it suddenly all shifted over to to the guy Andres, right? Like, they were just attacking each other over and over again, three-betting, calling, just floating people over. It was a lot of fun, a lot of street poker for a lot of money, because we're still playing for almost half a million bucks up top. So, like, uh, a great addition. Like, Season 2 has been phenomenal. Last week was great. Pablo Silva delivered two weeks in a row. Yes, he got second places, but uh, Haxton, uh, I mean, I don't know how he does it. Two wins, but his other scores that aren't wins. Second place, third place, like, consistently at the top. And it doesn't even matter. He, he, and he doesn't come with a big stack. He usually comes in in the middle, too, which is funny. He just, he's just so solid. Love him. You really can't ever go wrong betting on Isaac Haxton. And one thing as well is that that man is just the ultimate definition of a grinder and someone who loves poker. Because you see him, it's not just that he plays almost every Sunday. I think out of the 27 weeks, Hexton probably played 22 or 23 weeks or something among those lines. But if he busts, he always fires multiple bullets as well. It's okay, he's Isaac Hexton, right? He knows that he's going to put those chips to good use. And if it doesn't happen this week, he'll make up for it the next week. Uh, it, just, it was a very fun evening. Obviously, great to see Hexton win once more. We'll make a proper list. I know there is a nice list where we can see everyone who's won it in Season 1 and Season 2. I think it's like six or seven players at this point. And I think Haxinus is one of these guys. Doesn't matter what year it is, man. We could be doing this in 2028. And we'll just be waiting until Haxton ships his first edition of the High Roller Super Marines. Because you know he's not going to go anywhere, that guy. Uh, other than that, I, I felt that the Russian had some real potential. The guy who's played a lot of 25Ks, PSM. Like, he showed up early. He was battling over hands. And I think he got a bit unlucky when he went out. But I actually would like to see more of him because he came to play. He did not came to ladder. That man came to play immediately, and I think it showed. I'd like to see more of him. Yeah, you like to always find these obscure players that no one, no one knows who they are. And in like, you know, like Zagos, for example, you just love to find these guys. I don't know. You have, you've got some fanboy in you, and like in the in the weirdest players out there. But yeah, okay, cool. Maybe we'll see him again. Maybe we're not. I probably won't remember his name next week, but uh, cool. <laughs> and other than that, of course, we had Limitless as well, but he came in with a small stack. He couldn't really do a whole lot. Uh, did his best, hang in there, got a couple pay jumps. Then he went for it. I think it was a flip, right, how Limitless went out? I uh, don't really remember. Maybe he got dominated, actually. No, he got dominated. Ace, Jack, Ace, Queen, and Makita. 
just got yeah. 10 big clients. So yeah, no. yeah. Uh, Limitless didn't really have much to show, but at least he got two little pay jumps for his micro stack, so can't really complain. All right, well, that is officially going to do it. Unless there's anything else you want to get off your chest about today's episode, Nananaka? No, just that I'll talk to you in exactly one week. No, I knew before, you were going to say that. Nothing after. I, I literally knew you were going to say that. You're the absolute worst, mate. All right, guys, that is going to be it. I'll see Nananoko in exactly six days and 20 hours where he will show up two minutes before we go live. I hope you guys had fun. Obviously, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We do this each and every single Tuesday or Wednesday morning for Nananoko. It's a lot of fun. And obviously, we should get all the best at the tables. Plenty of cool stuff happening over at GG Poker. Spam those gifts. Have some fun. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Elke was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things, oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.